Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Heroes Lounge Rare Cup, where we are about to witness, coming up very shortly, the Heroes Lounge Rare Cup Grand Final between Sloth High Lords and Fat Nova. Now, both of these teams have fought their way through the Rare Cup, through the Division 6 and 7 stages. Ten, well, ten rounds of that over many, many weeks. Then... The, groups, the group stages, three more rounds of competitive action, and now they've fought their way through the knockout stages today to bring themselves to this, the grand final of the Heroes Lounge Rare Cup. So, what are we going to see from these two teams today? So, Iskor, you're here co-casting with me today. What? So last time these two teams fought in Division 6, it was a 2-0 victory, wasn't it? Yep, 2-0 victory for Sloss Highlords, and uh, you know, Sloss Highlords uh, actually um, ended up in number one spot in their division. So they won all ten all ten games uh, throughout of season. Uh, then they like. Uh, go through the group stage but there are some clutch moment when when they lost to um division 7 team but right now they got two clean victories uh, in quarter final and semi final and as for a fat nova they ended up in number 6 spot uh on the division table but um, interesting thing uh, is uh, that uh, two seasons ago this team was actually free agent team so there was five uh, individual men who just signed up for playing uh, in heroes lunch uh, they got into the team and uh, from that point they just started to practice together play together and win together and after two season uh three actually for now uh they become a strong team and uh, they are in grand final of rare cup yes and they must be feeling pretty excited especially after that semi-final performance now the la as i mentioned the last time these two teams clashed it was in the division stages when sloth high lords won 2-0 against fat nova now in that game in that match there was a towers of doom game <laughs> and an Infernal Shrines game. Now, Infernal Shrines has, in fact, already been banned here in the banning phase, as we still wait for the uh, we're still waiting for the teams to to pick the first map. But could potentially we could see another Towers of Doom game coming up presently, and um, you know that would be that'd be quite stressful for Fat Nova, I should think. Yeah, like will will they <laughs> go map again? I don't know. It yeah. was quite stressful and quite strong for them. So yeah, we got banned, by the way, Infernal Shrines, uh, BOE, Tomb of the Spider Queen and Dragon Shire. So, so yeah, so, so what, I, I, what, it, could, it could still be, it could still be Towers of Doom. Yeah. Um, the pick, the map, the map will be picked by uh i should know this <laughs> yeah by fat nova so but probably they won't pick towns of doom again <laughs> immediately yeah they maybe go to alterac or something like that uh or okay they take they choose sky temple oh it's that is interesting interesting it's interesting because really uh, they picked it twice uh, in the season and lost it twice. So, so maybe they got some pocket strategies this time for the Z-Map. We'll see. We'll have to see how they do with that. Well, if you're if you've been watching this at home and you've been thinking, you know. I, I want to get involved in this 
in this exciting competitive style of Heroes of the Storm, which really is the best way to play Heroes of the Storm. Heroes Lounge is the largest competitive league for Heroes of the Storm in the world, as far as we understand it. And you can sign up right now for Season 12. It's been going that long, can you believe it? Season 12 of Heroes Lounge by going to the Heroes Lounge website, heroeslounge.gg, and you can sign up on there. And you can sign up either as a team, if you've got an established team, you can sign up as a partial team of a few of your friends, or you can sign up as a free agent, as Eastcorp was just saying, that's how Fat Nova got started. And now here they are competing in the grand final of the Heroes Lounge Rare Cup, Division 6 and 7. And it's available to all skill levels. So today we're seeing Division 6 and 7. But tomorrow we've got Division the Epic Cup, which is Divisions 4 and 5. Then next Saturday, we've got the Legendary Cup, Divisions 2 and 3, followed by the pinnacle of Amateur Heroes of the Storm, which is the Heroes Lounge Mythic Championship, the teams from Division 1, the top six of those will be going in a double elimination knockout tournament on Sunday, the 29th of March, all here on this channel, twitch.tv slash Heroes Lounge. So, all that being said, we are almost ready to go into the draft here on Sky Temple. Now, Sky Temple, to me, that, that's a macro map, and it's all about getting structural advantage, getting macro advantage early on in the game. Is... What, is the draft going to reflect that for both of these teams? Uh, yep, and not only at the start of the game, like uh, on this map, uh, uh, objective uh, should straighten the uh, all structures. So every every point of damage that your team put into the structures matters on this map. Uh, so you can, by the way, for example, uh, Sloth High Lords playing uh, Zul, like they like new Zul, they play in it a lot, even today, and they can just uh, take it and push in some lines, uh, do damage to to walls, and then just just uh, make an exchange in altars and shoot some objective. So. That can be a game plan for Sloth Sky Lord. Uh, you can you can take uh, some globals here, yeah, like Falstad, for example, or Dehaka, who can just uh, push in one lane and then fly in to fight when it's single objective, for example. And there is, of course, a boss on the map. Uh, one strong boss who can sometimes decide the face of this map yeah and that's that so that's why it, it, it's so important to get that structural advantage um we are still waiting for the teams to assemble for the game number one it will be a best of five grand final um which actually i need to check um but the, yeah it'll be a best of five grand final for the, for these um For these teams here and so it's going to be a long slog <laughs> either way and of course you know these teams have been playing all day so i mean how much is fatigue going to affect them at this stage uh, no i i'm just looking for um some stats you know and uh none of the team uh, played false start or the haka uh much but uh as for Sloth High Lords, they uh, love to play uh, some uh, heroes like Abitur, like Zul, like Chogal, and uh, that's all uh, like Abba plus Zul can push in, uh, Chogal can be really annoying, uh, so there is a lot of stuff uh, they could bring in this map in particular. Yeah, and... that's true. I think there's a lot, lots of different ways they could play. Yeah. So even even one Abba pick on this map, uh, when you have Mule, for example, Mule, yeah, and you can deny half of the damage that Objective does <laughs> to your structures. It's pretty cool way to deal with it. So. 
in terms of bands, are we going to see Zul banned early on because of, uh, like you were saying, Sloth Highlords having been devastating with him? Mm, it's definitely a possibility. Like, uh, maybe Zul, maybe Arba. Um, there, they have strong heals, like uh, one hundred percent win rate with Regar with ten games. Uh, it's a lot games. So I don't even know. There is and Chogal absolutely must be considered as uh, maybe one ban. So it's it's like really really much many heroes to be banned here <laughs> you know yeah i think there's a lot of things that the teams have to think about there's going to be so much pressure on the drafters in this in this draft here in game number 1 it's my temple I mean, of course they'll also be thinking about the last time the two teams matched up like we said back in the division stages uh, when sloth highlords won and so there was a a Deathwing pick there, for example, by Sloth High Lords. And then Fat Nova felt they had to respond to that with a Lyoric, and it, it became a bit complicated. Mm -hmm. So we might see something, you know, we might see prioritization on things like that. But at the same time, they've got to think about all those other picks that you've just been talking about. And Abathur in particular on this map. But there's the Chogol ban. Not yep, Chogol going out. First one. Because we saw Chogol played here by played by Sloth High Lords earlier today uh, in the Rare Cup playoffs. Yeah, and by the way, they got 100% win rate with him too. So it's a strong pick. Not, not a meme pick, you know, it's really strong for them. <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah, I, I absolutely understand. And then it's, it's. So that's why the. We've seen the Chogol ban, the Imperius ban. Um, now the question is, are they going to focus map macro? There, okay, there's the Zul ban, which I think we expect okay. to come. Yep. So, uh, will it be Abba first week, or maybe maybe they prioritize in some damage dealers? Um. It could be Ab I If I were them, I'd be going for the Abatha, but no, they've gone for the Tyrion. Oh. Okay, so what viewers don't couldn't see, but the portraits, um, <laughs> the portrait synergy of Sloth High Lords, before the match started, they sent their portraits to the Juice Pirates kind of heroes. So they had Tyrion, Nazebo, um, Morales for Medivac, you know, so they set their portraits to that. The question is, are they actually going to pick that, or was it just, you know, a bait and a bait and switch? As Tyrion gets yeah. first pick. So it's a possibility of backdoor strategy right here, and the red team actually uh, deny Abba pick for the opponent and uh, pick him for themselves with Lucio. For yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. I think the Abba so, pick yeah. is solid, yeah. Yeah, like I said, you see, they denied Chogal, they denied Zul, they picked Abba for themselves, so they definitely knows what's going on. And doggies, double, double doggies. Coming for slots, highlights. So it suggests they're not going for that kind of backdoor Morales strat if they've got Rhaegar. Of course, they could theoretically go Morales, <laughs> Medivac, and Bloodlust. I don't think they would, <laughs> but you never know. I mean... <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, and and Rainer with Exterminator, Hyper Hyperion, you know. <laughs> it's possible. Everything is possible at this stage. As, yeah. as, I mean, it's still game one, so they could be trying out things that are a bit more exotic and say, look, if we if it backfires, we've still got four games in which to recover. So um, uh, yeah. that might be their strap. Uh, but okay, Regar, as I said before. 10 games, 10 wins for Sloth High Lords, so it's starting to become scary for Fat Nova. <laughs> Malganis ban. Very scary indeed. Malganis ban, sensible. Again, we and we saw that last time, last game against Fat Nova as well. 
and Joanna picked up by Bebos. Solid all-round tank. And of course, if they do go for some bloodlust nonsense, there's a blind right there that will help deal with that. And what will they pick up to go with that? I guess some, some mage or some wave clay here is what I'd like to see from the team in red. And they've gone for Jaina, exactly that. Jaina. Okay. Jaina can deal... Uh, can do wave clear, can deal burst damage to heroes, so... Uh, she can do camps, so it's a good pick here. Let's see. But, the, but right is now, this... yeah, is this Morales double support? Troll. Uh... No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a more <laughs> ordinary comp. But there is a possibility of bloodlust. You see that? You yeah, see yes. All, it, all yeah. The <laughs> so... There's still a possibility of bloodlust, and they could just backdoor without flying. You know, you just walk in. I think that's a lot more easy to react to for the enemy team, particularly with a Lucio can, who can help them rotate around that map. Uh, I'd be yeah. surprised to see a lot of backdooring and a bloodlust, but, you know, why not? And there's the Varian pickup that they've they've lacked on Fat Nova, and they've done very well with that kind of taunt blow-up combo. Yeah, and this is just a st straight strong push. Because Regor can push, Greyman, Atrald, Falstad, they, it's all heroes that can uh, do serious damage to structures. So, as we said before, this map is all about damage on the structures. And we'll see how it comes out for them. <clears throat> so, we've got to see uh, how they can... How they can execute this. We do so we have the Tyrael. I mean it, it's so it's an aggressive comp, Tyrael Greymane Thrall, that that sort of, as you say, invites the bloodlust and you and you say, Well, look, I'm just gonna run in bloodlust sanctification if we get in trouble. You know, maybe there's that kind of aggression there with that thrall Greymane. And and I don't you know, what's Jeannie gonna do? Maybe she can hide an ice block for a few seconds if she's got it up, or maybe she doesn't get it up to level fifteen or something. So it really is a tough situation if they do that, but I, I think that there would be a very aggressive strategy and there would be ways to counterplay that. Let's see, of course, what happens yeah. as we go into game number one of five, grand final of the Heroes Lounge Rare Cup. And on left, in blue, it is, of course, Sloth High Lords, with BW Bloody on that thrall, with the blue on the Falstad, with Seashell on Rhaegar, with Gathlo, on the grey main and with Dura on the Tyrael. And, yeah. and in red. And from the red, uh, Fat Nova. Galgar on Jaina, Vuza playing Lucio, Boss on Joanna, Antigurai playing Abateur, and Goryo on Varian. Okay. So, Sloth High Lords walking straight to the eye point, gave themselves vision, and run to the middle to soak some experience. Yeah. Ah, and of course shields from Tyroel uh, was helping, uh, will be helping with this push time to time. Yeah, well speaking of shields on Tyroel, um, he's got uh, he's got the Justice for All talent at level one to get to get even to get bonus shield value. Um, so more 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 shield there from Tyroel. Yeah. Gina going for the Fingers of Frost, the Globes talent, get the mana up and running, and of course the spell power later on. Lucio going for Accelerando, as we saw earlier. And Wingman, of course, from Falstad for the uh, the camp value, and of course the W single target damage. Yep, and this time we see uh, actually shield build for Regar. So this is Electric Charge uh, that can help him uh, go in and uh, get some healing, self-sustain, yeah? And later on, uh, get back mana. Yeah, and I, I usually, yeah, usually we see that picked up with the level four shield talent, get the mana, as you say. But not always, and he may, he may flex into the healing totem. Maybe, maybe. So, oh, so far, both teams are playing fairly cautiously, securing their siege camps. 
as early as they can. Gina has to half the mana already because uh, it can be tough for mana as a Gina before you get your globes up and running. Uh, yep. Varian and went uh, High King's Quest, by the way. Yep. And yeah, we see Varian with High Queen, High King's Quest. So this is a possibility for uh, or Smash build or maybe even Twin Blade. Well, we talked about Twin Blades earlier, and we said. Is you can't really take twin blades against enemy stuns. Well, in this case, yep. what enemy stuns? You know, there's no stuns from the enemy. He could have gone it. He instead he's gone to smash. Um, a bit more and standard, I think. There is aggression on the bottom of the. Uh, blue team got giants and they just walk with them and trying to do some damage before they even. Yeah. Stop. Good call from from sloth high lords there. Knowing so one of the things with Abatha mule is. It only gets value if structures have not been completely destroyed. And so yep. you see this card push in response from Sloth High Lords. Get structures down. And that means the mule, when they get picked up at level 7 by Abathur, which we're expecting, then it won't get as much value because, you know, you can't resurrect a dead tower. Yes. Yes. Okay, so Falstad going for middle soak. And uh, blue team starting to rotate for the objective. And uh, from this point, Abitur can start to push maybe bottom. Oh, Tyrell? <laughs> <I'm> aggressive. <laughs> I like just yeah. poking the Abitur just to make Abitur panic a little bit. Um, for, for, for a second, I thought that he he really want to jump in. <laughs> But okay, Abba on the bot and Greyman going straight to the bot and Greyman picked Wisdom to Elise as level 7. Yeah, so Joanna getting the Subdue at level 7, Gina going for the traditional Frostbolt cooldown reduction, even though it's been nerfed a thousand times by Blizzard. And there is what we thought, a mule down, a mule down, the cooldown mule for Abatha. Get those buildings healed up and deny some of that temple value. So, okay, is it uh, confidence going to Wisdom Duelist uh, right here? Because uh, they they got like Johanna who can blind you and deny some stacks, and they got uh, burst damage uh, with Varian Smash plus Jaina. So... Yes, I, I, yeah, so I suspect we're going to see people, the, the red team, try to focus down that Greyman and reset his stacks whenever they can. Um, but that doesn't always work out like that. And maybe his plan is, let's bait that damage out and Tyrael will sanctification me. Yeah, maybe. Maybe this is the plan. With a Rhaegar Ancestral and a shield from Tyrael, potentially they have great single target protection on the side of the blue team. And their plan might be, Let's just make Greymane go crazy, and we will protect him. Okay. And again, they take the giants and they start to push bottom lane. So this is become... Like, Abba, Abba can't heal this fort right now. And we got kill? Yeah. Varian kills false stat with help of Abadur. And he's good. However, I mean, so it's a good kill there from Varian, from Varian Abatha, but... But oh. they trade a fort. Yes, that. but having said that, it might be another kill at the top. Lucio and Joanna just running at BW with Ali's thrall. And bang, and that's Lucio? another kill. <laughs> He's Lucio. He's always going to escape. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but yes. Um, yes. Um, yes, yeah, so the fort is so important on this map. So I, I agree. I think a Falstead kill... You know, I would give I would give a life of a false stuff to get a fort this early on Sky Temple. Rhaegar, yeah, for sure. by the way, holding on to that talent choice. <laughs> so yeah, we got Bullet, Gust, Earthquake, and Bloodlust. And there it is. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be the Bloodlust blood blood. Sanctification. That could be potentially devastating. And there's not really much disengage. I tell you what might... I tell you what the, the answer to that might be. Is Lucio just turns on the speed and they get out of there? GTFO, like. It's and like... then Falstad could fly, flies back and gust them. 
Yes, although if That's he flies too deep trying to find that, then he's, then he's going to be in trouble. And by that time, maybe the Bloodlust ends. But here's the Earthquake. He's looking for the initiation. The Bloodlust hasn't been popped yet. Thrall falling pretty low. Oh, oh the Grey main damage onto Joanna. Joanna already doing taking a serious chunk of damage. And they have to sit back. The clone comes out onto Gina. They have the double Gina. They have the burst potential available. But they'll sit back for now. But uh, Blue Team played it really smart because they, uh, they got camp. Uh, top camp before this. And right now, that camp pushing top fort, and then they just shoot from the objective. So, they really got pushing two forts. Yeah, and those. And Abba, Abba trying. <laughs> Abba try to slap the minions down, yeah. Um, I'm, oh, but this is where Bloodlust comes in handy. Take the boss with it. Mm -hmm. Do, now, does the enemy hear it if they're out of vision? But Abba sneaks out, so red team is running. They know about this, but the gust is available. Joanna, there's the sanctification. sanctification. Can they get on the point? There's the gust, gust? denied. Oh, okay. G good play from blue team. Now, I'm so surprised. They know, they know that th they got gust anyways. Yeah, sound plus gust. This is really strong, uh, strong tools on the boss fights. Yeah. And they just use it. So I just want to answer a question from the chat, which is, is there a prize pool? Uh, no, there is not. This is, uh, this is just Amateur Heroes Lounge. Uh, we do it for fun. But this is, and this is Division 6 and 7, the Rare Cup. But there are trophies, and the trophies look really cool, actually. Custom-made trophies for Heroes Lounge, made by Eve. Um, and we will get you some photos of that, if I can, of those trophies, if I can. But they... They look pretty cool, and um, I'm hoping somebody somewhere in the chat has a photo of them to share. Otherwise, if not, I will find one and get it on stream later during the stream. But, yeah, four giants and right now, four giants pushing bottom lane. With shields from TRL. Oh. But they're they engaged. 3v5. Three, three Look at that blessed shield with the Lucio speed. Just Greymane's been deleted. The fake chain does so much work with the help of the elemental as well. And that's uh, that's a kill. Yeah, it's skill, but uh, for the blue team, uh, like, they were 3v5 and it definitely could be worse. <laughs> yeah. Like, one kill, less blood. So, so far, they are two forts down on the side of Fat Nova. And I always say, on this map, structural advantage is everything. It's so important to be ahead in structures because that allows you to play safe just control, you know, just trade temples and just avoid fighting. And that's the way you win this map. But Fat Nova, who came in with maybe them hoping that they had the Abatha to give them that structural advantage, in this case, they're, they're losing on structures because of the way that the objectives have been pushed by the blue team. Terriel goes in. Bullet is down. So, oh, bless shield. Joanna going in, Falstad, Falstad is dead. There's no he, survival. He tried to roll out, but damage was... As far as I saw, they didn't even use Smash for that, by the way. Uh, yeah, they didn't use it. Yeah, so he, that's how fast Falstad died without the Smash being needed. Without the water rental. Think about how it's going to happen. But the thing is, they have to be looking for fights. They can't be giving up a temple trade here on the side of uh, Fat Nova. They need to be looking to press that advantage. Now they've got the kill. They need to be looking to say, look, let's find more. But hang on, is the fight being brought to them by the Thrall on the Grey main there? Apparently yeah, not. Yeah, but, but there is a blue team who actually tried to fight. One stuck on Wisdom to a list, by the way. Varian. Varian. Can he survive that? Uh, but Jaina's... him with a head. Yeah, but, but is it enough? <gasps> oh, clutch. I credit so, to Jaina so, so there as well, just to throw a slow. Yeah. Yeah, good reactions so it, from the team. It, it, it's really one 100 HP left, so it's this shield from the head from Abba just saved Varian. Absolutely. A huge play from Abba and from Gina there to save Varian. Now they need to contest this temple, though. They've got the 16 advantage for a few seconds. Maybe they can punish Tyrael if the Blessed Shield is time... No. No. Tyrael so just jump out, like... Okay. So we got full uh, W build for Regar, 
now his uh, will he will start to do some damage with this rising yeah and uh, burning hello for Tyrael, thunderstorm from troll alpha killer for grayman and airy gusts for falstaff yeah so going for that traditional the because the most common build there the flow rider into airy gusts with that w at level one giving you that potential for a lot of W damage. Um, yeah, you, you got CDR and so on. So, with that in mind, there's a, a, a fight potentially warming up here. And look at this aggression from Sloth High Lords. They look so confident in this game. And it has sometimes backfired and that they're four kills down to zero. <laughs> so Sloth High Lords haven't got a kill yet. Yeah, They've actually, only died. There is zero kills. But it doesn't matter. Time. But it doesn't matter because this is Sky Temple. This is all about structures. And yeah, and they got a significant lead in structures. Exactly. So, um, but the XP has been kept up on by by Abatha. So let's have a look at the XP numbers there. You'll see that Abatha soaked 13,000 XP. The door's been shut. The door's been shut by Tyrael. The sanctification. Lucio, can he survive? He can, and he has his all. He presses it, and using the speed now instead of the heal to keep his team mobile and away from that bloodlust sanctification. Oh my god, and nobody actually died again. So, I have no idea no. how Lucio is alive, except by being really slippery. Yes, he's got that slip on level 13, which gives him the 20 armor when he's running on the wall. But... But still, <laughs> really. that was a bloodlust grey main thrall for stab, you know, running, you know, that should, that could have been potentially a nice speed. And the, the, the confidence it takes as a Lucio to say, I'm going to use my speed now to get my team away rather than heal myself when I'm on, you know, a quarter HP. You know, credit to Wooza yeah. there yeah. to get to an ID yeah. bloodlust engage. But right now, blue team just uh, they can just exchange exchange these uh, this... shrines before, because they got a significant lead and they even go for a boss play. To me, this is a big mistake from uh, Fat Nova to not force the fights. They can't be trading objectives like this. And yes, okay, now they've invaded this mid one, but that means they're giving up the boss again, which is going on the keep. And you know the thing, credit to Fat Nova, they're not dying, but you need to be getting structural value and you can't be trading temples playing safe when you get those kills, which they have been doing. They have been winning those fights. They need to be turning into something. There's a holy ground, completely box B boss in. Lucio jumps out with 250 HP, 30 Ooh, HP. So Wooza floating around, trying to dodge every shred of damage coming from both sides. Wooza <laughs> out! <laughs> Lucio got really... Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant there from Wooza and pushes everyone away oh my to God. stop. And he the... saves Jaina. Oh. So. Super play. Again, Sloth High Lord still zero kills. Great disengage from Fat Nova. And they're showing expert disengage skills. But what they need to show now is a bit more tenacity because of the structural deficit that they've got. However, because they got more of those temples, they're caught up let's say two halves of a keep and the mule is going to bring them back so in given time they're actually equalizing on structures here so fat nova very well still in this game yep but right now uh Rhaegar taking uh another uh siege camp and uh blue team can decide oh they even bribed the top camp so red team just uh left that for the sloth high lords and right now there is big push, big push from top and bot and uh, middle, so the whole team just go and throw straight to three keeps right now. Sloth High Lords getting level 20, they look so confident in this game, they look so in command yeah. of the map, and they haven't and got a single kill yet. And they and just, this yeah, they is just upgraded Bloodlust. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's powerful. And of course, Holy Arena adding 25% damage to everyone in the sank. The wind tunnel. If Falstaff finds a wind tunnel and they do a Holy Arena bloodlust, it's GG on the spot. It will be on the spot GG if he finds the right wind tunnel here. So, Pressure on okay, blue. they going into the core. They core in. They using movies. Level blood 20 blood? for both teams. Here's going to be the Sanctification. Sanctification. Immediately with the Bloodlust as well. They can just tear this core. The Wind Tunnel to Zone as well. Look at the core disappear. 50%. 30% after seconds. Seconds and that Bloodlust GG. Sanctification. Holy Arena. Where's the core gone? The, the, oh my god. The, the, 
I <laughs> like <laughs> we are sitting here. I don't even think about Corin right now, and they just walk in, use all of their ults, and win the game. Yeah, I mean the enemy team had level twenty. There was no talent advantage, but it's just we've got so we've got holy arena, we've got bloodlust. And Where's they, your cork on? I mean, yeah, simple as that. And they don't even got single kill this game, so it's it's like all about macro pressure, uh, like aggressiveness of their pushing. Uh, yeah, oh I mean. Sloth High Lords in this game, so much credit to them. Zero kills, and yet complete dominance of the map. And yeah. it just looked like it, they knew they knew always where to go to pull the enemy apart, and they made Fat Nova look confused. And they weren't confused. You know, Fat Nova were trying to play those was trying to play the, the right things. They were trying to get the mule value, and sort of gradually survive counterplay. It didn't matter because of Sloth High Lord's continued, persistent map aggression and just being a threat. Threatening without ever committing the violence that they needed. Wow, what a game number one in this best of five Ooh. grand final. And it's all still to play for. I mean, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, what, what, what do you do? What can what can men do against such reckless hate? Uh, I don't know. Don't pick macro maps anymore. <laughs> I don't even know. That, that was strong performance. Really strong. So Fat Nova need to bring bring they they power in team fights because um, they win uh, pretty much like. They win their team fights in quarterfinals, in semifinals, so they need to bring their power into this game. So they need to, even in this map, yeah, they got four kills. So in team fights, they pretty much uh, was in advantage. Yeah, I, I I would have liked to see more aggression from Fat Nova. It seemed like Fat Nova would get a kill or survive the bloodlust or something like that, and then say, well, okay. We've survived that onslaught. Let's go and play solid, and we'll just go and get a temple, and we'll trade temples, or we'll we'll get a mule going. What they needed to be really is aggressive and taking the fight to the enemy whenever the bloodlust and sanctification were not available. Just go, bang! We're going to bring the fight to you. You're not playing on your terms. You're playing on our terms, and particularly when they had the clone up or the sound barrier, which are the main playmakers for their team, and they didn't really do that. So Fat Nova need to show more aggression going into game number two. Yeah. More bring us more team fight power. And I, I mean, the Sloth High Lords showing exactly how you play in against an Abathur on Sky Temple. Just push hard together and don't let the enemy sit back and mule up and, you know, don't chip away with, with gradual bits here and there. Or, you know, the continuous tide of blue was pushing against the whole. Of the enemy structures all the time and then you would you know you would have the thrall Graymin Rhaegar there saying would you like a fight now while we've got four four giants pushing and you know sometimes that backfires because you know they lost they, 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 they that cost them kills you know sloth high lord got picked off a few times doing that didn't matter it doesn't matter if you're getting a fort for it every time yeah absolutely Okay, so what will be our next map? It's not uh, been taken. Nova... But yeah, Fat Nova Fat takes uh, first pick, so uh, map pick actually goes to Sloth High Lords. And they're sinking. Yeah, so Sloth High Lords going to um, pick either. Yeah, they're going to have to pick a, a map. I mean, what do we expect them? To pick what's the what's the go-to for sloth high lords do we think ah what we can expect uh infernal shrines is banned as we said before so right now they got i don't know even maybe garden or cursed hollow some some macro maps again 
uh, that they can bring out maybe some strategy, maybe something new, but it seems like they pick Volskaya farm. Volskaya Industries, and that's been picked by Sloth High Lords, for, and it's the second most picked map in Heroes Lounge in general. Mm -hmm. Yep. And this map, uh, again, all about camps control, items control, and point control on the objective itself. Yeah. So again, again, we could see some regar, yeah, for the camps, wave camps clearing, or we could see Grayman. Or maybe uh, if if Fatnova, Fatnova, mm, uh, like second question they need to decide, uh, is they going to ban uh, same thing as on the first map? Yes, yeah, Zul and uh, Chogal, strong heroes of Slots High Lords, or they going to ban uh, this thing uh, like Greyman or Regar something from the last map yeah i don't know i don't know what they're gonna do i i think there's a lot of problems that fat nova have to potentially contend with how much do you think psychology plays into this because i got the impression in game number one fat nova were just a little bit scared of sloth high lords and every time sloth high lords were coming at them it was kind of like don't hit me don't hit me oh we've survived now we'll breathe a sigh of relief instead of the, you know, what it should be, which is, you know, we, you haven't killed us. We're going to kill you and we're going to bring the fight to you. I mean, is that because they've been beaten before Fat Nova have lost to Sloth High Lords before 2-0? Um, I don't know, but even if that's so, uh, even if Fat Nova a little bit uh, scared of Top Dog from the Division 7 or 6, Division 6, um, they need to to like left this feeling right now because this is grand final this is no time to to fear or something they need to push push in push forward go in and win this grand final if they want to absolutely and the moment is now and i believe transparent linked a photo of the um of the trophies earlier in the chat so you can scroll up and have a look at the trophies that are at stake for um for these teams the winner the winning team gets trophies to denote that they've won the rare cup the losing team goes home with nothing yep and so far it's one nil up to sloth high lords in this best of five potentially another four maps to go here it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be a long evening potentially depends depends if fat nova can start to turn this around i think we're almost ready to go into the draft in game number two she'll be on volskaya foundry um okay what you know this is obviously a very different map from a sky temple so we're not going to see as much prioritization on Abertha, for example or on macro heroes as much yeah but uh but for slow sky lords uh, their composition can work uh, here because they got like grayman is strong hero Thrall is strong hero tyrael is strong tank right now so Regar is strongest heal for them, for sure. So this is this, this can work again even in this map. But uh, the question is, what will Fat Nova do in this situation? And this is more important question to answer right now. So they start in same ones for now. Chogal. So that's fair, you know, not not too surprising, I think. Um, we know that that chuggle can be really annoying. <laughs> yep, Keldas is banned out too. Goodbye, Slow Skylord. 
Um, what is the... Yeah, what, what else do they need to ban here? I mean, just general team fight. Of course, the Zul, yes. Um, Are you and Zul again? Uh, so, okay, Fatnova, I don't want to see two big boys. Two and a half <laughs> big boys. And what's what ban will be the last in this phase? Could be Lucio, you know, because that Lucio was so impactful there in game one. Going for the Rainer ban, Rainer. fair enough. Okay. Rainer is strong hero. And strong pick for the Fatno. So, okay. Now we'll see. Uh, what strategy Fadnova will pick in this situation? What they will do? Will they show the aggression or will they play around some camps? Okay, Joanna, first pick. Ooh, Abba Panda. Cool. Avatar and Panda for slots height. And this is this uh, setup is scary because when Panda jump on you, this is uh, scary as it stands. But uh, when Abator hits the Panda, this is like Abs yeah, this disaster. <laughs> That's gonna be you, you need a strong backline now on the side of on the side okay. of okay. Uh, Regar denied for the slots high lords and picked by Fatnova and the Imperial. So strong. Uh, serious front line here. Okay, so what do you want to ban? Obviously, you don't want to ban heal or off lane anymore or tank, so focus on some damage. Maybe some mage. Okay, they ban out Grayman. Grayman band. Uh, by the way, for viewers, you can still bet on who you think will win this next game. Exclamation mark bet A and a number of points to bet on Sloth High Lords. Exclamation mark bet B and a number of points to bet on Fat Nova. Um, so far, from what I can see, everyone has bet on Sloth High Lords and nobody on Fat Nova. So, somebody fix that. Come on. Could it be Deathwing peak for Sloth's High Lords right now? How do we think? Yes, I mean, I think that could be potentially very scary. I think it doesn't really synergize well with Abatha, who, of course, can't have Stag Swing. Um, and you would be left with then, do you get then you the question of do you get a tank for your team later on? Or. Vanquish the weak. Not. Okay, know, the like and Little Death Swing. You see? Yeah, so, uh, I, I knew this. Coming. You knew it was going to be baby death. Thing. <laughs> okay. Hmm. So we need some damage. Damage for Fatnova. Maybe some Sylvanas again for camp and turret control. Yeah, maybe a Ming as well. I think a Ming could be a great pickup here. We're going for Sylvanas okay. Valor. So yeah. fairly hard into the auto attacks. Sylph and Vala. Vala's nice against the Brightwing, can do a bit more um, damage even against targets with spell armor. But I I then wonder how is she going to cope with a Chen in her face? And, and indeed, an Arthas. So yeah, uh, and Chen and Arthas are really scary when they are hunted by Abba, and I don't know. Bo both both drafts are strong. Uh, like red team got Sylvanas to camp control, to uh, turret controls, and uh, to push with protector. Yeah, if they got one, but but left team got some serious team fight. Yeah, I think it's power. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of damage on the side of both teams actually. In particular, I think that the red team for me has the sort of more rounded traditional draft, but that Chen Arthur's threat 
it's, it's a lot of pressure on to Joanna to stop Chen and Arthas from running over Valat and Sylvanas there. So it's going to be a really tough job for them. Yeah. So let's see how we go as we go into game number two in this best of five. And on the left in blue, we have Sloth High Lords with Chen played by Gaflo. BW Bloody on the Jaina. We have Blue on the Abatha. Seashells, seashells by the seashore on Brightwing. And Dura on Arthas. Yeah, on, on the right, in red, we get Bibos on Joanna, Antigurai on Silvana, v playing Regar, Galgar on Vala, and Goryo playing Imperius. And we are going. And look at this blue pushing the bottom lane. Ooh. Okay. So they used Panda to block some shots from towers, Soak shots, yes, and just... But... But they didn't got it. They just uh, played safe. Played and safe they... for now. There is yeah. no Abba with Mule, so you can left some hit points. Onto yeah, it. and of course, it, uh, you know, the 250 XP was not the end of the world. Yeah. Uh, they can they can just go and get that at a later time. And then they'll pressure bot lane when they need to. Top lane soaked safely by Abatha, so... So far, both teams picking up all the sick available on the map. Uh, one Panda, Panda in trouble, each. but okay, good route from Arthas and Brightwin is here. And now in trouble, Joanna, but no, she's okay. No, particularly not with that larger iron skin on level yeah. one. Hold your ground. Neither team gone to a camp yet, I say, as okay, Wooza and, and, Tugurai, and Tugurai are going now for that turret camp on the right so nobody on the blue side has gone for the turret yet so that might give space to fat nova to go and take the support camp when they see the blue team go towards their own turret as gina is now thinking about doing uh, yep this could be a moment for fat nova to show some aggression get a bit of initiative get a bit of advantage early on it looks like they're not going to do that and they're instead going to play a bit cautiously no i've spoken too soon no, they're they, invading they already invade. Joanna is in. Imperius Panda isn't here though. Line. Imperius isn't here to help his team. So I, I don't know if so, this is a missed call. Panda and Dartas just destroying backline. As we said before, they, they just jump in and destroy backline. There is And now Arthas just walk walk in and kill the the rest of the team. Or or will he? Okay, uh... Imperius pays his life for two teammates, but but one more kill for the blue team. I mean, in, in a sense, that call of invade the camp is absolutely the right one because they ha the enemy team has an Abathur, and so the early game they might struggle. But they didn't all go. Imperius was not there, and so Joanna's the one who's gone in hard to the thing. And then that leaves Chen and Arthas free to run, as you say, on that back line. Vala just disappeared, and, you know, Rhaegar doesn't have the huge burst healing yet. You know, what's Vala going to do? Yeah. And... Uh... By the way, this is like some hybrid build for Regar, so he took a shield on uh, first level and totem on level 4. Yeah, and so... Um, it's looking fairly solid so far for the blue team, having won a fight basically that they didn't expect was coming even. Adrenal Overload for Abathur on level 4. Going to give more attack speed to the Chen, probably. That might be scary in itself. Possibly they may give it to Arthas instead, although he hasn't gone for an auto-attack-based comp. Now the red team wants to secure this healing item, and I think they may well do. Chen's a little bit too late. Can he pick up the item? No, Rhaegar's got it. <laughs> Immediately uses it, and Chen's died. Okay, but they force uh, Fat Nova to use this hidden beacon right there. So this is some kind of a win out of this situation. Yeah, and the Chen will actually respawn in plenty of time to contest this objective. And so I don't think they're too worried about losing the Chen. Yeah. Imperius v Jaina at the top. Jaina is doing a lot of damage to the Imperius with the help of the Abathal on the minion. And so now they have to be careful in mid because 
Imperius isn't there. Now, will we see an yep. invade here from the South Island into that red turret camp? No, that we won't. And now, as we said before, red team got second turret in a game. Chen has maybe overextended here. Valor and indeed. still tearing him to pieces. But with an Abathur hat, he's healing up pretty nicely. As B Boss wants to put pressure onto Arthas and, and Jaina. But uh, he may die for that. Okay, team, team saves him. For now, Panda is going in. Panda is going in. Panda. Okay. He's gone back. <laughs> Back on the point, and now blue team can just take point, and maybe even they, they could uh, give up some uh, point percentages and uh, give uh, or take their turret and then go in. But they go in right now. Yeah, and now here comes the red team looking for Jaina. In comes the bright wing phase shift. Immediately healed Jaina into full health with a shield. Rhaegar's absolutely been torn to pieces just by Chen alone, effectively. And Chen... Rhaegar goes down, but Chen actually paid the price. And Valor's getting worked on. Golga on this Valor, absolutely cleaning up there with the help of Sylvanas. So let's take a look at that hero damage numbers. 14,000 from Valor so far. Only 13,000 from Jaina. Another 10 coming in from Sylv. Yeah. It was a big win because they managed to uh, keep Joanna alive with uh, 40 HP or something and then Vala just clearing the whole enemy's team. It seems like they use the, the, the Chen di the, the idea normally for Sloth High Lords in these fights is Chen dives to kill some, some backline. In this case he used it on Rhaegar. Rhaegar did die but then so did Chen in the process and of course in the meantime if you're not diving on Valor, she's just doing whatever she likes. And in this case, Valor got a lot of value. Yeah, yeah. So, do they do the red team know that Arthas is in there? If we take a look at their vision, we'll see that they can't so actually... Now, now we got ultimate evolution for blue team. So, it can be double Panda or double Arthas. Or double Jaina. And they going in. Yeah, it is double Jaina. In, com in comes the Wailing Arrow, though, immediately stops it getting too much value. Chen still has his ult available. The objective, though, secured by the zoning. Yep. So, yeah, as I said about Ultimate Evolution, they just pop it in and uh, use the advantage of extra health pool and secure objective, and now they're just pushing with big robot. Yep, and he's going to push straight onto that mid fort and not going for the traditional top fountain. Instead, going for the, trying to get a fort. It's ambitious a little bit because Valor is getting free real estate clearing this um, protector. Look how much Valor does to that protector. That's before she even gets anything like Manticore. In comes the phase shift from, from Brightwing onto Chen. Keeps the Chen top top for now so he doesn't have to use the Storm, Earth, and Fire. Yep. And now they go in top, but. Uh... Maybe is it a little bit late to go top? But Panda going in, go straight to, into the fort. He has his ult available. Uh, oh, the Rain of Vengeance just misses. If that hits Gaflo, he's dead. There's the Blessed Shield. Has that hit him? Will it stop him from using his ult? 25 HP with the Blessed Shield bonus damage. And Chen gets away. Wow. Uh, Chen is really lucky. <laughs> he goes... So I've dead. You know what they say, the good player is always lucky. And Chen still <laughs> has his ult available. Okay. Gathlo really trying to push the limits of this hero, really trying to tear apart the enemy by being a target, being a nuisance, and forcing fire onto himself. Yeah, so for now we see same situation. Uh, Slot Sky Lord are definitely more aggressive right now. This Chen's is gone in hard, there's the stuns, there's the silence, he comes Brightwing though with a huge save and that allows Chen to split just in time. Now he's going to turn it around onto the Sil, the roots are there, both onto Sil and the Valor, Chen alone tearing through the enemy team. There is a, it's a massacre on the red team, two down already, maybe they can get a third, the Ancestral comes out, keeps an extra one alive and Chen will have to back out for now. But that, just the combination of Chen with the Abathur and Brightwing, and he's still going in. He's not finished. <laughs> Gathlo's in there. And by the way, Imperius is threatening Jaina, so Chen can't go too hard. Has Gathlo made a mistake here? Has he gaffed? Has he made a gaff, oh, you might say? Oh. 
Okay. Lovely, lovely. The stagger damage secures the Chen kill onto Chen. But uh, yeah, <laughs> he's definitely really aggressive right now. Really aggressive. He's just he he just leading his team and show shows to enemies like we didn't scare you at all. Even your fort doesn't stop us for killing you. Yeah, but it turns out they should have because Chen actually died. Um, I think, to be fair, credit to Goryu on the Imperius there, who saw that Chen was coming in for the second time and said, look, I'm going to go on Jaina and threaten them, and then you're going to have no support because they've all got to focus on Imperius. And yeah. then Chen's just like left on his own. And of course, that's when he overextended. Yep, absolutely. So right now it's all about this uh, big support camp and uh, actually top uh, objective. So both teams are ready to fight for these two points. Who will win this? We'll see. It's going to be tough for both teams actually as they posture around this top healing camp. Level 13 talent, we didn't get too much of a chance to look at, but there is the icy veins there for Jaina. By the way, she did not go for the frost bolt on level 7, which has been nerfed, as I say, a lot. Going for the ice flows, which is very popular these days, the cone of cold talent, because you get a, a huge cooldown reduction on it um, yeah. the more you hit. Um, and on the other side, Rhaegar with this shield at level 13, of course, to help provide a bit of burst protection. Uh, yep, and team. interesting that Walla doesn't take a Gloom uh, for a bit more of spell shield and took actually Temple Discipline. Gaflo's gone in so deep here. Nice Rain of Vengeance. They've interrupted the channel. The silence is there. Can the Chen be saved? Yes, again. Again, they can't quite finish off the Chen despite getting the lockdown there. Ring of Frost dodged nicely by B-Boss, but it doesn't matter because there's so much damage coming out. There's going to be another kill. In comes the channel. The Boogie Wonderland, the Storm Earth and Fire. They want to chase more. They've got four kills, though. They don't need the fifth because they're going to get a fourth as well. Yeah, and now they're just... Uh, they have level 16. They have Abba on point, who are dancing, by the way. <laughs> so this is... This is... If you're Fat Nova fan... <sighs> yeah, this is... It's got to be intimidating. And the thing is, the, the Fat Nova were looking so confident in some of the earlier fights, but now I just get the feeling they're not focusing that chain enough, or they can't bring out the damage, maybe because of the level deficit, or something like that. But you see, they're getting the lockdown on Chen just right. They're stopping him from using his ult. He got interrupted. And then he's not dying. And that is a big problem for Fat Nova. Because if Chen doesn't die and he gets to pop his ult off, that's when things are falling apart. Yeah. So the blue team is going straight for the keep. Yeah. And With Robert. They're looking to... It looks like a potential counter... Like, Forced engage from Fat Nova, trying to go in onto Brightwing, gets a lot of slows there, but Brightwing blinks out to the minions, saves his life for now, offers pops his army to stay alive, and the robot has fallen down. Chen does not have his ultimate available, and Jaina is stuck here in the keep. The skewer dodged nicely by Jaina using the ice block, and here comes the cone of cold damage onto Rhaegar with the Ring of Frost on top, but Chen dies on the other side. So, yeah, this time they got Chen, but they lost three heroes in the process, and keep. Yeah, and I, I sort of think Chen knew what he was doing there. I think he was sort of expecting to die, but expecting to create space. And his, his idea was, look, I'm going to draw fire and just tear the enemy apart. Make yeah. them panic. And that's what they're doing. And they're just so, cracking under that Chen pressure. Yeah, and Jaina finishing off the mid fort with the help of Abba's head, who got a uh, network carapace on his shield. And they take in another turret. Will they invade uh, onto the enemy's camp? I don't think that either team really wants to invade at this stage. In particular, there's no incentive to invade for Sloth High Lords because they, they can just wait for 20. They, you know, they, they've got the superior position in every way. And if they just sit back and wait two minutes, they'll be level 20, and that's when they can take control of the game. Yeah. They just push in but Jaina sneaks out that the red team is doing and Panda just jumped in. 
Both teams have all Eight. heroics available. Gaflo draws a lot of fire already. His health bars barely move. The hat comes out. The Ring of Frost is there. Hits onto Rhaegar. Manages to use the healing item just in time. Is Rhaegar still alive here? Wooza still alive. And the damage, the turning around from Sylvan Valor. They're starting to clean up. Arthur's down though. Rhaegar eventually falls. Joanna might be next to fall. They don't care about the backliners anymore. They're just killing the frontliners. Rhaegar down. Joanna down. Imperius is going to be next. Brightwing and Jaina chasing. There's the Brightwing damage. Imperius skewers back in. Wants to catch onto the Jaina, but I don't think he can. Gaflo being kited, but it's, too, it's not enough. And and there the, the stacker keeps Chen alive as he chops through Sylvanas. And this is another kill. Vala dead too, so this is full team wipe and uh, they go in core. It looks like, yeah, Chen's just said, look, we're going core. I don't care that I've got, you know, 10% HP. I'm going core and your, your teammates have better follow me. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be a problem. Yeah, and yeah, ten, with 4 seconds before Joe and Dragger join the fun, but, but I'm uh, not... they are level 20. I'm not sure this core call is the right one, you know, because Chen and Jaina don't have that much core damage. And of course, yeah, because the, because the level deficit is so big, the respawn timers are actually pretty small in favor of Fat Nova. So Fat Nova, you know, there's two AWP already. Sylv's coming back, Valor's coming back. Chen does not have his ult available. So, maybe Chen is dying for person on the core or he... No, no he's just jumping <laughs> out. Has Brightwing just got oh Chen out of God. there? I cannot believe the audacity of Sloth High Lords right now. And oh Chen God. gets Even away Abba with murder. <laughs> oh, this uh, is where, is, where is Joanna going? Uh, I did not see how Joanna ended up running into the enemy towers there. Uh, yeah, me too. What's with Joe? Hello? <laughs> Um, because it looked like, yeah, I, I know it looked like Joanna was in fighting an office and then sort of ended up running into the towers instead of running home. Uh, okay. W we'll call it accidentally minimap click. It might be just that he thought, there's no way I'm getting out because Chen's running at me as well as Arthur's. So I'll just die faster, get my respawn going. But Maybe. It's a... Uh... I don't know. I don't know what to. It's it's just such a tough situation right now for Fat Nova. They've they they're gonna lose this protector. They've already lost their top keep. This protector can go directly on core. They're gonna lose their another turret over to the enemy team. They don't have level 20 in their sights even. But has Chen overextended? Is this the way to counterplay? Can they punish the Chen right now before he can use his ult? They have to get some disabled. He jumps out. He doesn't care. He, Boogie Wonderland has been popped. He, Chen starts to jump back in. The Ring of Frost there. Puts the slows onto Joanna. It doesn't matter that she's got an iron skin. Destroyed. Absolutely destroyed. But there's some damage coming out from Valancel. Torn through this Chen and ult and the <gasps> Joanna. Joanna survived. BW Ooh. Bloody on 120 HP. That's a potential turnaround there. I mean, yes, they did lose the fight and the robot and the level 20 and the Joanna. But I tell you what, that was as good a defense as you could hope for, given the circumstances. Yeah, but right now it's like 50% of your core left and a big giant robot going in. So it, this defense will be tough. It will and Imperius might die right He's, here. Yeah. He's dead before the fight even starts. And uh, that's that, giving Chen free real estate because there's no tanks to stop him anymore. So where's Solvarn is going to go? Yep. Seems like this is game number two. Abatha driving the robot. It doesn't even matter. There's there's the Valor kill. It's two kills for nothing already. Rhaegar trying to create a bit of space, a bit of time. Hold them in this grand final for just a shred longer. But it's nothing doing. This protector is surely going to end this core. It's going to be GG. It's going to be 2-0 up in this best of five. Well played, Sloth High Lords. GG. So yeah, another clean victory. This time, Sloth Sky Lords uh, destroy their opponents without even uh, lost a single fort. Yeah. So for now, Fat Nova need to like bring bring all their powers, all their uh, skills to this match because it could be potentially last map. Yeah, they've got to pull something really special out here. 
on the side of Fat Nova if they want to stay in with a chance at the Heroes Lounge Rare Cup. By the way, we can now show on screen the uh, a photo briefly of the trophies that Hero you can see for the various Heroes Lounge Cups. Um, there we go. You can see there the, the, the different colours for the different cups. And there's, you've got rare, legendary, and legendary and uh, mythic, and epic as well. So definitely, the teams will be seeking after these customized, personalized Heroes Lounge trophies, which are unavailable anywhere else on the planet except by winning Heroes Lounge cups. What Storm League rank are these players? It was asked in the chat by Migs. I don't know. I think this is from gold, plat, some diamonds here in Division 6. I will say that Division 6 and 7 are the lowest Heroes Lounge divisions, but these are the top players in those divisions. Yep. It, it, it can vary, it can vary for sure. I I think I have B-Boss on my friends list actually, so maybe we can have a look. But um, yeah, plat and yeah, mostly plat ish is what I would guess. We are just going to see what the teams are up to, see where they. Um... Yeah, so we're just waiting to see what the teams want to do for the next game. It is a best of five, don't forget. So we still have up so to have... three more games left to play. Right now, Fatnova need to start thinking about reverse swipe. <laughs> because one more map and it will be late to think about it. <laughs> yeah. It's the but Gaflo is again. low master. Yeah, yeah. Because like we said, it, it depends. It depends on MMR and so on. So if your team got three golds, gold player, yeah, and one master, you could be in division six. If your team got five plots, you could be in five, four division. So it's all about uh, average MMR of your team. So... Yeah, I mean, there's a the, so there's some people saying some masters. It's partly about the ranks and uh, like the average the ranks that the average rank. But the other thing is, you often find that teams don't play. You know, the, the team's performance in Heroes Lounge is not wholly dependent on their rank, and it's a lot more about how well your team works together than how good necessarily individual players are. Yeah, definitely, because uh, in competitive play, yeah, semi-competitive, when you got actual team, uh, all five players in the voice chat, you could uh, could sh sh shot calls, yeah, some decisions your captain may do or you or something, so you got communication and so on, and this is... Uh, not about some uh, personal plays. It's about your team, uh, team synergy and team S power, power, the team. Absolutely. So the next map has been picked. We are going to Towers of Doom for game number oh three, my. which could potentially <laughs> be the last game of the Heroes Lounge Rare Cup this season. Uh, and we had a Towers of Doom game not long ago, <laughs> and it was pretty intense. So uh, this is going to be very interesting indeed. And by the way, uh, this map picked by uh, Fat Nova, and it was Fat Nova that uh, got some clutch final moments on this map in semi-final. Yeah, absolutely. So um, it's going to be probably a very intense game here as we 
warm up for game number three of the Heroes Lounge Rare Cup Grand Final. Let's take a, a look again at the bracket to see how these teams got here in this situation. So if we look at the bracket, we'll see that uh, <laughs> Fat Nova 2-0 to face Palm Tacticians, then they beat Stray Dogs 2-1, and that's where we had that very close Towers of Doom game. And now they're up against South High Lords. South High Lords, on the other hand, 2 0 everybody that they went up against so far. So, you know, it's, it's not easy to call just based on those performances. And of course, right now, it's 2 0 up to Sloth High Lords. Yeah, tough situation for Vadnoa. Now, Towers of Doom, what do, we, what do we expect the draft to be like here? As we go into game three. Oh, it's a, it's a really tough question because right now, uh, Sloth High Highlots, like they got two different approach uh, on map one and map two, yeah, and they got their, like Zul, Chogal, Abba, so on. So for Fat Nova, it's like. They need to just uh, pick one strategy that works best for them, that uh, they think they could bring it on right now, because from this moment, every map could be lost for them. So they need to fight for, the, uh, like for their lives. As for Sloth High Lords, I don't know. They seems like they could play anything right now <laughs> oh, really they really aggressive really confident so it could be anything really there's the chogul ban not allowing that they're not they're not letting their guard down for a second as well um so really not well like wanting to allow chogul against them even i mean on any map by the looks of things Kale is banned by Sloth High Lords. What else are they going to ban on the side of Sloth High Lords here? I mean, they could ban Macro because of his Towers of Doom, or they could just target ban again with a Nubarak. Okay. Oh, okay. Interesting, because we've seen this before. A new play. And this is a good ban. So okay, will it be Zul again as a ban for Fatno? Yes, I mean it's got to be surely because you don't want to be leaving that unless yeah you don't want to be leaving that Zul open yeah okay so yeah yeah done. get rid of the Zul. Um, now, what's the first pick here? There's there's just so many different directions they can go and what Sloth High Lords showed well in game number two for me is that they didn't have to play the same way they did in game number one and they did still looked very confident and they had a quite a different draft and it was all about that chen being very very aggressive but we see aggression time and time again from south high lords maybe the strat from fat nova is to respond to that with some kind of disengage you could look at a false step you could even look at a bright wing with an emerald wind um lucio yep. they did well in game number one with the you know for the disengage there but then they didn't capitalize on that in terms of macro. So something like a Lucio again could, could absolutely be fine. The problem is they um, didn't actually play uh, disengage heroes by much. And we got Anduin and Joanna. So okay, Anduin is something new for Fat Nova here, but uh, as statistics says, yeah, that Anduin got only 16% win rate for Fat Nova. So will it work for them today? Well, we'll have to find out. There's a Stukov with a Stitches. Now, stitches. let's have a look. I mean, that's that's always interesting to see a Stitches pick up. Um, uh, I want to see, uh, you know, like Abba Mediv and Stitches and double portal gorge <laughs> into the uh, 
uh, tower shots. Yeah, but, I mean, <laughs> I think it's worth <laughs> having 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 a look to see uh, see what the stitches statistics are for. For Teachers for Slot Skylords. Uh, so if we. Mm, do they play him even? I'm not sure. Maybe they, that might be a sub as well playing. I, I don't know all the details actually if they played it before. Uh, yeah, this is actually first time they picked this hero. Okay, so this is. They're trying something new and a bit adventurous. That suggests to me they're feeling fairly confident as they come into game number three. And uh, we got Jaina and Greyman, so... <laughs> Did they listen to you? And that's why they... <laughs> Is this stream sniping? <laughs> um... <laughs> oh my. So, tell me what's going on here, because... I don't know. <laughs> I just thought that it could be interesting, you know, double portal, hook gorge and straight to the tower shots in your base, someone, but, <laughs> but right now this is actually could be true. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is going to be interesting. I, I mean, potentially, if the Medivh is good... This could be devastating, but if he's not... Uh, for that reason, uh, Fad Nova picked Uther, so they got uh, double support with uh, aggressive uh, damage dealers. Bursty Jaina, Bursty Greyman, so they don't want to disengage. Right now, they, they bring in their power team fight power double support is uh, known for that so we'll see will it work out we will have to see as we go into game number three which could potentially be match points and already there's a, a slight pause but we can you know, still introduce the teams and on the left in blue we have sloth high lords with bw bloody on the throw Dura on the Stitches, Seashell on the Stukov, we have Gaflo on the Medivh, and Blue on the Abatha. Yep, and from the right, we got Fat Nova, Bivos on Joanna, Gorio playing Uther, Wuza on. Uh, oh my god, on Anduin, Galgar on Jaina, and Antigorai on Greyman. Okay, so. And we got some. Pause right here because PW Bloody was left the game, but seems like he's back. And yeah, it's... in a moment we will start our game. Yeah, so as far as I can tell, Gaflo has not played Medivh yet this season in Heroes Lounge. So I couldn't find any data on that. So I don't you know, I think this might be a novel idea for that for this team. And as we as we just said, the stitches player is a is a substitute. So Dura is is not um Five, not their normal three, tank player. So two, one, that may be that why they've never played stitches before. I honestly have no idea what's going to happen here <laughs> in this game number three. Talents are no in there. Uh, so okay, Uther go to. Hammer of the Lightbringer, and he will be stuck in his quest to reduce CDR on stun. Yes, I think that's the standard talent for the offlaner Uther, isn't it? Um, uh, sometimes so some people take skew talent, but okay, aggressive portal. But no action right now. I think aggression is the name of the game from Sloth High Lords in you know the last two games of this series. Yeah, definitely. They, they look like so aggressive. Yeah, seems like they were the only team that look for the fight these two games. 
and they're they're just behind the enemies' walls and trying to kill them. Like they don't care. They go to go in for kills. Is this gonna be a hook onto Jaina? Not even tried. Um, so Jaina gets away with half health. Medivh sniffing around. He has the portal mastery at level one, by the way. He's already on eleven stacks, and I suspect he's gonna get more of this camp fight. There's there's another two already. Pings on Medivh. You can see how much they want to focus him. But he portals out safely in time. Although he's on a quarter health with no protection available. Got to be careful. The Grave is running and reset the Medivh. So the the aggression of Medivh punished there by beautiful. Greymane plays from Antirigui. Yep, but they take the camp. And uh, of course, Medivh doesn't uh, get much stacks for his uh, baseline quest, so he could die here. Uh, doesn't like lose too much. Oh, excuse me. Oh, bless. Um, yeah, so the. He didn't lose many stacks. Yeah, he lost 13 stacks, which is, you know, not inconsider inconsiderable. And so he's still on zero stacks right now. Portal Mastery and Raven Familiar, fairly standard talents from Medivh. The playtime from Stitches, again, really standard. The, I like the patchwork creation idea. I, I'm not sure about it on this map myself. Um, I guess he's confident that Abatha, Stukov and Medivh are all going to give him a juicy amount of healing. And so that will really help Stitches keep tippity-toppity. Yeah, but it's like double support, why why not take yeah. increased healing? Yeah, I think that's the plan there, I think. Oh, lovely Ooh. aimed hook on Jaina. I'm, I really think B-Boss on Joanna has to be really wise to this and say, look, I'm not going to let you get hooks in on my backline. You're going to get a hook on me or nothing. And that's why Joanna has to be all up in Stitch's grill. So far, Joanna's been a bit, you know, running it towards Stukov and Thrall, but then that leaves the hooks free on Jaina, for example. Yeah, but on the top uh, top right, we got uh, Medivh, who just trying to kill Uther. Medivh and... with an avatar doing a lot of work. Now, there's no and... stun available for Uther for a oh. second. <gasps> the Jukes! <laughs> and Medivh dived so deep for that, Jaina might punish him. There's the portal exit, surely. Surely Medivh's gonna pay the price here. Everyone's waiting, both ends of the portal. No, don't let him raven. <laughs> He's hiding, hiding away, their protection's there. Medivh might even get a kill. No, he eventually oh, goes down. It was interesting fight. But he Medivh bought... is really juking in and out. With but he bought. Portals. But he bought so much time actually that his teammates were able to arrive. Now I'm not sure that's a good idea for them to arrive because they're effectively 3v5 right now with maybe an Abba hat to help. Stukov putting a bit of silence. Thrall's turned it around Bonjour. with the Abba hat. B boss Ooh. gets away, Aye. but yeah. starting to look very. Overconfident, maybe on Sloth High Lords, they're looking like they're really diving so deep for stuff that they don't need to really, particularly early yeah. game. But the good thing for Fat Nova is they're really uh, they're leading right now on this map in experience and in core health. So this game, uh, they they fighting for their lives and yeah. they're trying. Camp secured by Fat Nova though, and they are looking very Fat Nova looking a lot more confident in this game than they looked in the previous two. Portal pressed by Medivh, and this is a potential engage here. They want to take the fight. Uther comes in with the stun onto Stupkov. Joanna there starts the wave clip. Oh, stitches hooks Uther back into the Blizzard, but the Blizzard is on the side of Fat Nova, so Uther doesn't care about that. Joanna goes in, disrupts the Stukov silence. The call is made to go on to Stukov, but the protection comes out from Medivh, who lands, has the portal available. But again, Medivh has paid the price. Yep. Another 20 stacks by Studas. And I just can't... I can't help but feel like Gathlon Medivh is playing a little bit cocky here, just feeling like, you know... Yes, he's been imp very impactful in the last couple of games in this series, but maybe here it's uh, it might be overextending too much, particularly before they get that level ten with the Abathur clone. Yeah, and and they're like fighting four v five, and this aggressive portal was really interesting to me. I don't know, but right now we got five v five and fight. Over the objective. Yeah. 
And Uther goes in. Uther's doing so much work on the front line here. We haven't given him enough credit. Greymane jumps in. Nice cleanse onto Greymane. Allows him to keep chasing the Stukov, even in the face of the slows. Medivh taking a lot of damage. But there's the damage onto Stitches. And it's eventually Stitches who falls because all the resources were focused on the black, protecting the backliners from Greymane, who can now jump out. Mm -hmm. Really good play from Greyman. He just uh, poking the enemies, and when uh, things got troubled, he just jump out, and that's all. And now uh, red team uh, got earlier level 10, so they got bless shield, cursed bullet, a light bomb, uh, divine storm, and they got kill on <laughs> trial. And then, and... Yeah, I mean that looks like all of those things you just read out were immediately used on Thrall, and <laughs> he just disappeared. Um, yep. And they got camp. Okay, strong. For now, this is strong performance from Pat Noah. On they this did. Month. They did use five heroics though to secure a kill and a camp. Now they might be able to push this. Ta the pings being out on the stitches. There's the roots. Medivh does have the protection available in half a second. The, the portal is there. Stitches steps back. Goes back in. Yep. Jumps back out. In out in out. He shakes it all about. There's the Earthquake to maybe look for a counter-engage here. The Leyline Seal catches onto two members. Onto four! They've ran into it, the rest of the team. Now there's the Gorge onto Uther. There's the portal. Uther's going to be very, <laughs> very lonely. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that's why you go Stitches Medivh, I guess. Is there, is, this, is, this is the beginning of their game plan. The Gorge portal. Yeah, and now they can invade enemy camp if they want to. I think it was maybe a slight overextension from Fat Nova because they, they sort of forgot, I think, that the enemy was waiting for level 10. And once the enemy got level 10, then that's when they executed their level 10 plan, which they've been waiting for, you know, yeah. all game. And, and yeah, you saw that, like, immediate usage. Like, they got level 10 and immediately pick it and use And it was cool move. But there's no ley line now. There is no ley line now. And Stitches being burst down. Nice blizzard on top. The light bomb as well. Catching onto three. They're chasing hard here. Want to catch onto Thrall. Maybe they can catch Stitches as well. But Joanna's still there with the iron skins. It's just keep going. BW bloody locked down. There's the protect from Adiv. There's the, there's the stun onto Thrall. And he does die. But eventually he takes down Joanna as well. Greymane? Oh, ho, 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 ho. He went Ooh. down to 25 HP there, yeah, but 25 HP is 24 more than you need. <laughs> I really like the way Fat Nova are playing this. They're saying, look, we're, we're not here to be bullied. We're here to, you know, we're here to play some Heroes of the Storm. And we will, we really will kill you if you come, if you with this portal nonsense where you keep going in and out and trying to make plays. And Greymane is just saying, I'm going to take, I'm going to take names. Look for the hook. There's the oh. hook. Is the gorge up? Yes, it is. Are they going to gorge him? Are they going to portal? They've chosen not to gorge there immediately. I'm not entirely sure why. And that's given an invitation to turn around and just destroy Thrall. The fake Thrall will go down as well. And the portal gets Uther into a bit of trouble, but not so much that he can't get out. There's the stun. On to Stukov as well. And it's three killed in short duration. Although one of them was a, an Abatha clone. Yeah, and this is the aggression we needed to see from Fat Nova from the first uh, map. Uh, because uh, even before the series started, we talked about that uh, Fat Nova got some... Uh, they Their power is teamfight. Yeah. And first two maps, they're just running away from their opponent. And right... Like, now they fighting and they really hurting Floss High Lords. Yes, and uh, credit to Fat Nova. This is a really strong showing for them in game number three. I think they're being helped by the fact that the Sloth High Lords are being very, very aggressive as sappers go in the bot lane and more core damage has been taken here. This is looking very tough situation now for Sloth High Lords who don't need to fight this 12v13. They could have defended the sapper bottom instead and tried to play the talent. There's the lockdown from Uther. The Greyman comes out. Great protection from Medivh. There's the Leyland to try to disengage. Greyman gets eaten by the fatty and he, the large lad might try to go somewhere but there's no portal available for him. It's been used for his teammates. Stitches is on his own in a world of hurt. Yep. And by the time one supper actually could sneak in and deal one damage to the 
lost high low score. But again, aggressive portal. Medivh just going in. Oh, and, but Hazuk's forever and, extended and here. And he kills Uther, but pays his life for Zed, but Joanna is dead too. Yeah, but this Greymane is becoming an absolute monster, starting to chase people relentlessly. He might even get a Stukov as well. He is, he's chaining deaths like, like, like they're, they're daisies. And they're going to catch on to Seashell as well. And that's... Yeah. This Greymane is starting to look terrifying. Greyman showing some clothes here. Oh my. And they even go to the boss. I like that call. I mean, they could have defended the bot lane instead, but I, I think this is reasonable. Get the boss and look how close the enemy is now to losing the game. Yeah, only eight, eight points. Eight core left. hit points left. So uh, it will be triple alter phase. So they need like take two and they got him up. Fishing hook now for stitches though. Are they just going to play a bit more passive? Play the hook gorge portal game a bit more? Because so far they've been playing a bit aggressively on the side of, of Sloth Halos. St Stitches though, maybe he's already in trouble. So much stun, so much lockdown, so much burst damage. But it doesn't matter because Stitches is so fat. And there's... Oh. <gasps> that went through Uther's legs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I think Uther enjoyed that a little bit. As Stitches tries to reset his hook cooldown by slamming away but this keep is owned by the red team and it is starting to shoot onto stitches lockdown there's the protection there's the gorge there's the ley line oh no they can't take him too far no they've put joanna in the <laughs> no they made a mistake they put joanna too far and she's been knocked out um and that's okay. not quite gone the way they were hoping i think in comes the gray main wants to get that light bomb value hits onto thrall only Gonna be a bit cautious. Joanna is there, but there's no gorge available, so they don't have to worry about that. Stitches goes down. Yeah, this fight is really messy. Like they they trying to kill someone, but they they can't. I have to say one thing I like about oh that's a stun onto Medivh. Just about portals out. One thing I like about Fat Nova's play in this game is uh, Abatha. What are you doing? Oh, throwing the mule to stall to buy time. But for what? They're 4v5. <gasps> it's not game if they can just give this point. Um, <laughs> is this a bait? Was this a bait onto Greymane? Yeah. This is perfectly executed here. He, they he might punish Greymane. But he wants to chase. Mule and, <laughs> and baited into the team. Oh my god. It was cool play. The confidence. <laughs> The Stukov clone has been protected. The Dufan committing of resources has just tried to kill a clone. Uth has been silenced for a long time. And he comes there with a Divine Storm onto Medivh. Medivh gets locked down before he can even click on his own portal. And Greymane's now going to start chopping up as he has been doing all game. And it's another kill. Two so far. Can they get the Stitches as well? Bang! The, st the Cursed Bullet. And Stitches dies. And this might be GG. Yep. Yeah. Only trial left, but he seems like doesn't do much. Can't do much. And this should be game number three going over to Fat Nova. Yep. 29 mil. Two, one. Whew. It, it intense moment with uh, Abba <laughs> interrupting Greyman and then just baiting him into the team but that didn't work out after all yeah i'm slightly surprised there um but it means the show goes on we are gonna go to game number four soon enough i mean i don't know what to make of that game it sort of feels like sloth high lords were kind of overconfident coming into game number three because they They'd done so well in games one and two that they were like, well, now we're just going to sort of run in and just be all up in your grill and we're not even going to wait for the hook gorge portal. We're just going to portal in and be very aggressive. Yeah. So, yeah, they get really overconfident. And from the other side, Fatnova uh, gets just confident uh, because that Greyman, uh, he's just wrecking them like 
70k damage, by the way. Um, <clears throat> yeah, huge, huge performance from Kramin. And I think, so one thing I like from Panova, as we're saying before the fight kicked off there, is the the knowledge that they had of the two supports. Because you see sometimes teams pick two supports and then they play the same as if they had only one support. But here, Greymane and Joanna were like super aggressive in the knowledge that they had Uther um, and Anduin backing them up. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely right. So, okay. So let's High Lords go into first pick. And uh, Fat Nova... Bringing us on Alterac Pass. Okay, Alterac Pass. I again another thought. It looks like Fat Nova want to mix this up, keep it a bit, you know, different. Keep Sloth High Lords off their home ground. So Alterac Pass um, should be interesting uh, as soon as we get that up and running. I mean. How do you think they're going to play Ultrak Pass? Is it going to be more of macro focused? Are they going to look for a Ragnaros and do some lava wave shenanigans? I mean, what what do they do here? I think that Fat Nova needs to bring their like their strong strategy. And today we actually saw them on Alterac two times. Uh, they played uh, like with uh, Varian, Etc, Jaina, yeah. So they might just play this again uh, because it's definitely their uh, home strategy, yeah, and they preparing that for sure. And uh, they need to play their strange. So I think they they must go that, yeah. So and for the. High Lords, I think uh, they need to like slow down and bring bring this uh, strong performance from the first and second map. Don't overcommit, don't overstep, and just play. My yeah, I agree. I I think the pressure will be on. Fat Nova to stay because of course it is you know still match point for Fat Nova whereas Sloth High Lords have a bit more breathing room so you may see something more inventive from Sloth High Lords again but on the other hand now they may be thinking we've got to go back to basics because we took a fair a fair pounding in that game number three yep and like moral advantage going for Fat Nova right now because they won last map and they are on fire like must to be on fire <laughs> because if they not it can be potential potentially our last game because Sloth High Lords right now leading to one in this series best of five series by the way absolutely it's a best of five and so this could be uh this could be the end if if sloth high lords were to win it but of course standing in their way it's fat nova the team who placed sixth in division six uh, by contrast sloth high lords placed first in division six you're watching the heroes lounge rare cup grand final and we are <laughs> Fast approaching the end, potentially, as we go into the draft in game number four in this best of five. It's Alterac Pass. Uh, yeah. So, will we see Chogal and Zulban for the first time <laughs> this series? I think Zul I need to be banned for sure on this map. But... Will they like put Chogal on a table and trying to to do something with that? I think I think they might, you know, um, because you've got to be thinking about the map, 
Now, obviously, Chogol is really annoying on whichever map, but I sort of think this map, maybe they could just split push and just ignore Chogol, ignore those fights. And if they go for something very macro focused on the side of Fat Nova. However, having said that, we know that Fat Nova like to fight and they do rest in the fighting. And actually, the macro is what they struggled with in game number one. So that's probably why they're banning the Chogol yeah. there. So uh, the second one definitely will be Zoo. For Fat Nova and for Sloth High Lords, it's Imperius. So they denied some of the engage potential of the Fat Nova. And Zul is gonna be banned. Surely, surely this is a Zul ban. Here we go. <laughs> Why did they make us 20, 24 seconds? <laughs> it's a mind games, like <laughs> tactical pause. But Sloth Hailers don't think too much, they just lock in Joanna straight out. And for now, we'll see. Will Fat Nova play their, their strategy that they showing us two times today? With Varian and Jaina and so on. Or I'd like to see it. I think the Varian makes sense here the, and the same. But that looks like the Oriel makes it sound a bit different because she's less about the CC unless, you know, she's getting some good whips. But yeah, so this is more like a survivability uh, comp with Malganis and already Oriel. Yeah, I wonder like... if they're going to play a bit differently from how they played earlier today. Or maybe it will be Aurel with Res and some kind of double support and uh, and hyper carry ish hero and Deckard and Jaina. For... So right now Fadnova must think about maybe banning some uh, offlaner or maybe okay Grayman. It's just maybe because of a uh, bullet that Grayman can throw on to Malganis and just destroy 40% of his health to prevent this. Yeah, so I think that's a solid ban. Um, although argue, there's an argument to say they could have picked it because we know they, they play well with that Grayman and Grayman was so important for them last mm. game. Maybe Fat Nova should have picked it to deny rather than banning. Deathwing ban from Sloth High Lords. Personally, I think that might have been what the plan was from Fat Nova. But then, would you pair a Deathwing with an Oriole? I'm not sure that you would, because he can't generate hope for her. And yeah, okay. she can't Chen heal. And voila. So, right now, it seems like we could actually get second support and try to play this Hyper carry Wallow with Resurrection and something like that, maybe. But we'll see. For now, it's two picks for Slots High Lords, and this is Illidan and Abbas. Oh my. Oh my. Oh. <laughs> so now, what do they do to respond to that? Because they could just go a second support again. And you know, you, what about if you go a Lily here? Damage Lily? <laughs> Like, I mean, that'll deal with... Oh, it's the Mediv games! I tell you what, I was not expecting that. I was kind of expecting that when they pick Aurel for the... Like, really, I said this two times that it might be double support with... Yeah, no, I was expecting I was expecting double support by... I wasn't next yeah, uh, I was expecting, expecting Mediv. Mediv. I was, okay, I I was maybe Uther or, or maybe even Azaria might have you know, mm. more. Yeah. But, okay. It's a quite strong pick for the red team. And I don't know about uh, Elidan. Mm. Even, even with Abba Head, I... I... <laughs> <sighs> Well, 
There's only one way to find out. Yeah. And that is to go into game number four in this best of five grand final. And on the left, in blue, we have the Sloth High Lords currently 2-1 up. If they win this, they win the Heroes Lounge Rare Cup for Season 11. And they are BW Bloody on Gina, Blue on the Abathur, Gaflo on the Illidan, Dura on the Joanna, and Seashell on Deckard, who's riding a very brightly coloured slug. Yeah, and on the right, red team, Fad Nova, Wooza playing Aurel, Antigurai on Vala, Bibos, Malgeni, Gorio on Chain, and Galgar playing Medif. Okay. Uh, so we got an Indian hatred on Illidan, stuck in quest, and we got Brawl, first Brawl of the game. Yeah. Jaina got him serious damage. Of course, these kind of brawls might profit the blue team because they can use the Abathur to soak in the other lanes. But immediately we see both teams going towards so to lanes to soak. Camps up in 20 seconds. What we need to see oh. from Fat Nova. And by the way, loads of hope for Johanna. Not Iron Skin talent. And this might be a kill in the middle of the map. It might be, oh, but, but for whom? <laughs> but I, 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 I thought that... <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I thought, I was looking at Oriel as well, and uh, and, that's, and then Jaina died, and I was like, hang on, that's not Oriel. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Great saves on Oriel, and she managed to just about get away on twenty-three hit points. Yep. And now immediately um, we see the camps. Yep. So okay, uh, Illidan going to the camp. Uh, with help of Jaina, and from the red we got Vala and Aurel who clear in their own camp. So this is pretty much at the same speed. And Deckard is the uh, only one bot <laughs> for that moment. <laughs> yeah, really. Illidan's gone to join him, got that. Uh, that. And then the Hatred Snacks up and running. Two so far. Um, I think it's when he gets to 20, he gets the bonus. And of course, it keeps stacking forever. Yeah. So I'm expecting, based on that, that Abathur will go for the attack speed on level 4 with the hat. And immediately, Adrenal Overload slam picked by Joanna. Sorry, not by okay, Joanna, by so, Abathur, sorry. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, red team uh, clearing camp. Uh, first, and now they can push with their own, but Jaina pretty easily destroyed it. But they go in, they go in, just don't care about walls and towers. Just try to, like, Malgenis try to engage to set up something with sleep, and Wala just pew pew there. Good work. Yeah, but I think the, they're trying to get value out of Antarigui's hyper carry play. That can be yep. so effective. I think the problem in terms of draft, the problem for Fat Nova is Malganis is a tank who might find it hard to control Illidan because, yes, he's got a lot of CC, but it's all kind of uh, slow moving stuff that Illidan can sometimes dodge with his high mobility. Yeah, you're right. Oh, Spray Wars <laughs> from Illidan. Yeah, we saw a few sprays in the last game as well, actually. Um, I haven't got the stats on how many times each player has sprayed, but uh, I'm sure it's a sizable yeah, this, number. This continues. Okay, so right now, again, uh, camps are up, they go in, uh, and Medivh even sneak out, but I doubt they will invade or something. So it's about camps, it's about uh, getting level 7, and only after that, we will see fight for the objective themselves. Yeah, so both teams are going to secure the camp and get the seven, as you say. So level seven talents are in. So we have Jaina going for the Cone of Cold talent. Again, nice flows. Mid oh, hang on, Marganus going in, gets the lockdown onto Illidan. There's the damage coming from Medivh and the sleep from Marganus is nice, but it's not enough yet. And that's that was their CC on Illidan. Now what do they do? That's the problem. Because how do they blow up an Illidan in that case? And, and how do they stop him from just chopping through Malganus relentlessly as he's doing right now? And now he's just going to turn onto Oriel and Bala. Now, 
Aurel and Valor together may be able to stop him. Here they go. Is the whip available? Aurel getting a lot of energy coming out from this Valor doing the work. And finally, Jaina goes down. Illidan is, of course, still running rampant in the back line. It's Valor and Aurel versus Illidan and Abatha Hat. Illidan maybe overstepped here. Bang! Yep, another kill. And aggressive portals, they go into the Joanna and might got another kill. Or will they? Yeah. And maybe even they could get Deckard, but I doubt. Okay. Uh, Deckard survived, but right now objective is taken by the red team. I really liked that division of labor in the fights where Illidan, sorry, Valor and Oriel deal with Illidan together. And he can't really 1v2 them because of the amount of energy that Valor's creating for Illidan. And then and the rest of the team, the rest of the red team is just dealing with the rest of the blue team. So uh, Illidan was then left effectively alone, although with an Abba the hat. And he's dead again. Nice, nice coordinated lockdown there. The sleep from Malgan is absolutely huge. The, the capture of the objective has been stalled at 4.6 seconds remaining. Maybe they can chase the kills though. As Chen goes in, throws some damage. Malganis goes in, gets the sleep onto two. Has, the, has used the stun already, so he won't be able to follow up with that for now. And that is the first objective. Yep, and they are like half level before their ultimate abilities. So uh, just in a moment they will get them and they can heavily push with the objective and level 10. Yeah, so speaking of ultimate abilities, are they going to are they likely to go for polybomb on Medivh or for Leyline Seal? Because no, poly it's Leyline already picked. Oh yeah, now he's picked it just now, yeah. Um so the Leyline's there, <laughs> available to go in. And they could use that even to engage here because this cavalry is about to come in. Are they gonna do it? I would like to see the ley line coming here from Medivh. He's yep. not sure. And this is there. resurrection by the way. Oh really. And nice sleep, nice setup. Portal in. Yeah, Madiv gained the damage onto Jaina. There's the Malgana swipes, catches onto two! Double stun! And... Ah. Ooh, Ilida. Oh my god, it was clutch. Like, the second level 10, uh, like, strikes for blue team, Illidan just metamorphoses, boom, and use it, and he survived. Because do, you, of that. do you think he was always planning to go meta, or do you think he was planning to go hunt, and he picked meta just to escape from that situation? Uh, I don't know, it was really... It was really like speed play, you know, when you don't think about it. Just as, as level 10 strikes, he immediately took the, this ult and uh, jump out. So I, I suspect it was. it was meta because he's, you know, he's kind of going full auto attack and he wants to be sort of a, sustaining these fights. Um, but, you know, the resurrects could be interesting, like you were saying, because let's say Yeladen chases and kills Valor, you know, She's just going to get resurrected, and then he's he's got to do it all again. He's probably lost most of his health in that time, so this could be tough for Illidan. And as he has to jump out now, nice, nice escape there from Illidan. Has the hat as well. Lornado trying to put a bit of pressure onto Medivh, but Medivh does not really care, and he'll get yeah, away. Yeah, and 36 stacks. He need to be careful <laughs> right now. He needs to complete his quest before dying, for sure. <laughs> Organics. And red team is pushing, pushing top. Yeah, pushing um, aggressively with Mon all yeah. five men. Yes, I think they they really want this forward. Chen has his ult if he has to, but oh, dodges the blessed shield with a jump over the wall. Credit to Gorio and Chen here is looking incredible. And they continue to push in. Jaina, of course, can help the push this really, really fast, but right now he's target. But She's okay. Okay, Ford survived. Jaina survived. For she... now. But uh, red team will get level 13 in a moment. Yes, they will. Although it's not that much of an XP deficit for the blue team. They're maybe half a level behind. That's not not too much to be worried about. The yeah, thing but they... There is some gap and uh, right now they go in with... Yes, yeah, that's advantage. Yeah, so right now, yes. But I think they will be able to soak 13 in time if they just wait on the side of the blue team. Deckard so ambitious there with the positioning, but there has been a pause, so we'll go back to our faces for now. Um, yeah.
this is a live shot of his corpse face, as you can see. He's got very angry looking eyes. Yeah. It's a cool day. Why not to look like that? <laughs> ay, ay, ay. So, okay. Uh, we got... Um, as I said earlier, uh, level 13 for the red team, but uh, blue team just just need to add a little bit of soak and they can actually contest this. Uh, on this map, objective is uh, not so... Like, you can um, give up some seconds on the objective uh, to uh, neglect some uh, talent disadvantages or if you're doing some like you can um, exchange some seconds on the objective to destroy some forts or some do something useful in this map and then just go back to the objective reclaim that and there is no big deal so blue team is using this advantage right now uh, and just trying to soak uh, talent that they are missing and mm. go to the objective itself. Yeah, and I think they will get that 13 in time and then they're immediately going to contest that objective. The clock will have been started, but it's got 40 seconds. It's, it's plenty of time. And then this, that's going to be the interesting question is what happens with that level 13, 13 talent. Um, level 13 talents that, that Fat Nova have picked, by the way, piercing lash for Oriel to whip everybody in a line away from her. That will synergize nicely with that level 4 talent with the stacks on her E. The Gloom for the Valor, so getting that spell armor uh, to deal with the Jaina damage. And the uh, the Blood Rush for Malganis. So every time he's healed by Oriel or Mediv, he will go faster. Yeah, fast, scary vampire. Yeah, and Ring of Fire for Panda to more like more wave clear more damage in team fights some magic damage and enduring will uh that cdr on the shields for mediv and yeah what can we expect for the blue team like jaina can go icy veins to destroy someone from the red team or maybe maybe even go shield but with double support i doubt they go that way uh, abba of course can go uh, spikes healing spikes we are back in the game there's a ring of okay, frost ring Immediately hits on Toriel. She has the protect from the deep, survives for now. Illidan falling so low, has to pop the meta just to stay alive, sits back for now. But Red Team doesn't finish yet, they go in again. And the Malganis wants to keep chasing here. Yeah, gets the, tries to get the sleep onto Jaina, but doesn't quite connect it. And Illidan now starting to get free real estate. But there's. There's the blizzard. Oh, and the blessed shield onto Oriole. Protection onto Oriole. Keeps her alive. Dodges with the portal. 90 HP. She's still alive. Joanna's chasing so hard. And there's the ley line. But Chen is the first to fall. Can they punish this Illidan though? Yes, it was one for one yeah. so far. And now they're going to try to turn this round. Valor Oriole going to be so effective here in this 4v4 yeah, situation. Yeah, Oriole can rest Chen. Yep. So, so it's going to be 5v4. 5v4. And Malganis isn't finished yet. He's looking to chase BW Bloody. Goes in with a swipe. the ice block dodge from Bloody. Ooh, cool, cool move by Jaina. But uh, seems like this objective will be uh, taken by Red Team again. Yeah, and a, uh, a great performance from Fat Nova so far. They're looking so confident in this game number three. So game number four, I should say. And there's a whip onto Joanna. Putting Joanna under pressure, actually. Malganis with the sleep to completely isolate the rest. And they just say, no, we're just going to walk off and play our advantage, not get over cocky. The, what we're seeing from Fat Nova here is the discipline of a very experienced team. And so credit to them here. Yep. And now they push in mid lane. Oh, Abba, Abba, hello. Hello, Abba. Okay. 
Oh, but he's dead. And that is going to give a bit of possibility for Malganis to go in. Gets the sleep onto Jaina. There's and the triangle from Decker. Just about gets away. Big heals from Decker Kane. There's the Leyland Seal. Might set up for a kill on Deckard in a second. Swipes come in from Malganis. Stuns Jaina and Deckard, but they get away. Okay, ring misses. Malganis trying to do something. He sleeps Deckard, but uh, nothing dying here except of the fort. So uh, on the top fort the, is the two. Uh, Illidan trying to chase down Panda with help of the Abatur and Triple Panda escapes. I think Illidan's going to be very happy with that because that's a very long cooldown used by Chen there. Two minutes yeah. cooldown. Very long and very scary, I must add. Yeah, so that's a big team fight resource that's effectively been brought out by Illidan for, for nothing. So with that in mind, they may look to fight on uh, in the next two minutes before that comes back. Chen's on the way down. Illidan does not have Hunt Bear in mind, but he is going... Of the solo <laughs> boss. boss. I mean, he can honestly. If I were the red team, I'd say let him do that. Just go and fight. Of course, they don't know that he's doing that boss. Yeah, this is the problem. And but... and they back in, so they really they really didn't sneak it out that uh, Illidan is on boss. So they didn't uh, like bottom boss, and they didn't. Or I did they? I think they're okay, guessing it, it now. Like they go in top. Okay. And, oh, uh, what's Illidan done here? Has he just made a big mistake? Has he just given a free boss and maybe his life? There's the whip, the meta to dodge. Medivh chases. Has the ley line maybe to engage? He chooses not to. He says, no, let's just secure this boss. Then I have the ley line available for that if I need. The calm... Yeah, okay, he's kept this life, his life, but boss, he, he just... Okay, blue team just gave a free boss to the Fat Nova. Yeah, and... I'm not sure, I mean, it was sort of high risk, low reward, because if Illidan gets that boss, if he secures it... Um, what do you get? On yeah, the fort? It, yeah, it, yeah. Most of the fort, because it, they, they could probably have defended the fort as well. It would have got towers. Um, and then, like, who cares about that in a sense? And of course, if Illidan, maybe had, if Illidan had been killed there, that would have been a disaster for the blue team. Yeah. And now red team just doing bottom boss and... Uh they're ready to go straight into the objective after that but maybe maybe blue team can interrupt them they're coming for the boss contest it's down to one fifth hp Elden wants to run in there there's the lornado trying to zone the point is a little bit too early though because the boss hasn't actually been finished the gina ring of frost is the one to finish it chen's on the point malganis comes in in they go the chen doesn't manage to get his ult off in time and he goes down the resurrection coming out onto oriel because she's already been killed malganis swiping around on the point trying to hold it like they did on the towers of doom game earlier and now the chen's playing put to the deck has been put to sleep chen's already dead Elden chasing onto valor and oriel is not in position to protect her there Oriel's not in a position to protect anybody. Oriel goes down. Medivh might be next. The metamorphosis is to chase. <laughs> and that is four <laughs> on the deck. Oh, my. Yeah, the, it was really intense fight on the point. Like, Malgene swiping, swiping. It's, and Dilladan just destroyed their backline while that happening. And uh, really... The most sad part of this is that uh, Chen didn't even uh, use his ult, so he died before he can pop up three pandas. I think it got interrupted, if I'm right, but or... Uh, by boss. Stun. Oh, okay, yeah, by uh, boss, then, okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then has staggered his death. That's a disaster, because they could have been back in time to contest this objective. But now they have to give it, because Malganis will be dead for the remaining time. The Oriel Resurrect is not up in time. To, hear, to bring Malganis back for this fight. So, a, a real, a, a couple of fault lines here showing in the f performance of Fat Nova, which was looking flawless until that last boss. The scene is that Sloth High Lords will, uh, will have level 20 on this push. And this is pretty rough for Fat Nova. The redeeming feature they've got for Fat Nova is that they've still got forts in top and mid. So top and mid are not in the slightest bit a problem. So if they can just defend bottom lane safely enough, 
and make sure that those cavalry in the mid don't get more. I mean, like, they shouldn't really be here, 20 versus 18. Deckard's going to put a root there. Chen might have to pop his ult for this just to stay alive. And if he does, that's a huge resource committed. The Lornade are trying to interrupt him. Look at the damage onto Illidan, but he manages to pop his meta. Here comes the Ring of Frost. Chen puts the Boogie Wonderland ult, stays alive. Look at the chase onto Jaina. BW Bloody falling so low. The potions are there from Deckard. Chen, she looked at the chase, but the ice block hide. And now Chen's got no Boogie Wonderland left. BW Bloody still alive somehow with the shield <laughs> coming out from the Joanna at level 20. Chen tries to retreat. Yes, Chen might get away with the help of the portal. No, he's been rooted as well. Marganis is already dead. Chen getting locked down with a blizzard damage. Have they overextended here? Has Fat Nova blown their chances at the rare cup that were looking so promising? The protect from Medivh. Keep Chen alive again. Kills Illidan! He was like meter away from the potion. Meter, millimeter. I, I must add. Oh my god. How many times I thought that Jaina is dead, but but Jaina doesn't die. And now Medivh is the one who dead. Oh my god, this is really really clutch fight. Like three times I thought Jaina Jaina is definitely dead. But she's blood oh my god. Sloth High Lords managed to uh, not only uh, kept uh, she's alive, but uh, got two kills. Yeah, even they, three. I mean, I, I'm surprised, honestly, that Fat Nova took the fight in the first place. That they were when they were 19 v 20. I'm surprised by how well they did and got killed and look and you know and threatened Gina so hard. And then I was surprised that Gina didn't die <laughs> and survived. And then I was surprised that Illidan died. It was just a lot of surprise. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and uh, now uh, they got their own level 20 talents, uh, so this is Shield of Hope for Aurel, Farfighter Quiver for Valla, oh my, Seeker Swarm for Malganis, Elemental Conduit for Chain, and Guardian of Trisfall, Tiris Fall. Okay. For Medivh. So, and this is going to be fight over the boss, top boss. They, uh, they don't have like... to contest this. Oh, it's a trap. Uh, this is trap. Yeah. Do they it's... know? Morganis is so deep. Ooh, Valor was Valor. so extended. But the protection from Medivh, keeping her alive. But can she get to the portal? No, because the blessed shield's there. Yes, she can. The Ring but of Frost. Aurel... But a big, big Ring of Frost. Really power play from Jaina. And the Lornado stops the Chen ult from going off. It's on short cooldown. I think Chen knows that he's dead. There's the protection. He does have his ult in two seconds. Will he be alive then? I don't think so. No. Chen goes down. This might be game. Illidan starts to chase, looking for the Oriole. Has the Shield of Hope available, but she's dead before anything can happen. And it's three on the deck. And honestly, they c I don't think they can end directly, though, because no, of the, the, the armor. This too. So they will take the boss. Uh... Maybe they will get a uh, keep with that. And of course, some seconds on the objective. Yeah. But. Like, Fat Nova is, need, need to. to wait all their players and show us some strong team fight. Uh, Medivh is, by the way, using his level 20 ta talent to push <laughs> bot lane. Has... And it was a good call. Honestly, if Oriel had gone light speed at 20 instead of the shield, she could actually have resurrected here while they were doing boss and stuff and run away because he would have had the light speed to get away. And then that would have reduced the cooldown and stuff. So maybe, of course, you, you know, you, you, she couldn't have predicted this situation. Malganis, so aggressive here and getting away with it. That's the shocking thing. Illidan's doing a boss bot. For me, this is a waste of time because the boss on this map is not going to end in, in the slightest. Maybe it'll get the keep. Maybe. But the bosses are pretty weak on this map. The objective's very strong. And with those members dead that they had, they could have secured the objective. Instead, they've gone for bosses that might get structures and might not. And it's like, well, you know, you need to be thinking about ending the game when you win fights like that. Malganis goes in. They, I don't know if they know that Chen's not here, though. Yeah, and this is like three... Really... Four, and Chen is coming. Illidan's on the way. Illidan's going to be behind Chen. Illidan's coming in the back line. I don't know if Valor knows that's where Illidan's coming from. The boss has been capped. The bot is starting to roll. But be the only one has been melted. The Jaina dies. But the resurrection for Oriel is coming back. But she won't be able to resurrect Malganis when she gets back, though. In comes Oriel again. Still alive. Keeping the Valor alive. Heal. The protection from Medivh helps massively. Can they lock down this Illidan without the Malganis? Did they put the CC there? The whip puts Joanna away. But he's got this meta. It's going to give him the bonus attack speed as well as everything else. Starts to chase. Has the Abba the hat. Medivh falls 
falling low. The protection's been used, but there's no portal. But Gaflo finally Ooh. goes down. And he's falling. Okay. Uh, by the way, boss really got a keep. Yes, it did get the keep, but it can't end, I think. Oh, maybe it can actually, because now there's two keeps dead. Um, so Valor's got to go and defend that. But Medivh and Oriel, the famous, the famous PVE damage combo, uh, <laughs> is now going to go and uh, secure this objective. 25 seconds remaining. Now, if Joanna clocks that Valor, Chen, and Valor and Chen and Malganis are all not there, then Joanna could go and contest that with an Abathur hat. But she's chosen not to. Get the camp. Play safe. Everything is fine at the moment for both teams. Oh my. I have to say, this is an insanely, insanely close game four in this Heroes Lounge Rare Cup Grand Final. And the Cavalry are now being summoned at 22 and a half minutes for Fat Nova. They really, really want to get a win here. They want to go to game five, if, they, if nothing else, just to keep playing this incredible series, to keep, to have a chance to enjoy this for another game longer and to have a chance at that Heroes Lounge Rare Cup and those beautiful trophies. Level 23s are in. Now look at this bush. I don't and think the red team knows. Here. Look at the vision. They can't they see. Way. In comes the okay, then immediately. Goes immediately on Valor. Protection's there. Ring of Frost onto Oriel. Can they blow up the Oriel in time? She does have the Shield of Hope. Can she survive? No. The Ley Line was a little bit too late. Resurrection on the Oriel, though. She will come back. Chen pops his ult. Tries to kill the Joanna of all people. Illidan just going free, though. Freely onto that Valor, who gets the protection from Mati. The channel starts to pressure Gina away, but Gina is still alive. Illidan chopping through those Chen illusions now. The Chen gonna come back Jin? in normal form. Chen can die right now. Ooh. And ooh. And so Valor can Valor. But I don't think they can goes. end. <gasps> he's gone for the Medivh and he's got it! Wow. <laughs> Bravo. But they like, can't. Illidan shows some aggression. Malganis has got the CC here. If there's a whip. Oh, Wario might be dead. Is there a whip? Is there a whip? <laughs> no, there isn't! Cool. Cool place. She has resurrect, Medivh. though. She can resurrect. And she has to because. Because she has to. Nice sleep into the tower damage, but he doesn't care. This Illidan does not care about tower damage. Why is Oriel not resurrecting? Is there a bug and the resurrect is not back up? Am I... Mm, okay. But, oh, it's but, not back up. It's not boss, back up. Boss is seconds. stronger than Illidan. Okay. <laughs> this is some kind of... Maybe Oriel uh, don't resurrect because, like, whole team dead and uh, the whole uh, blue team is defending, so there is no actual reason to... It, it, no, waste. it turned out it was on cooldown uh, for another 20 seconds. It's just that there was a ah. bug that sh doesn't show uh -huh. it properly on okay. the top. Um, but, oh, I mean, the game is still not over. I cannot even believe what is going on here. They got the kills, they won the fight, Sloth High Lords, but they, because they'd lost the cavalry, they've now lost all their keeps. Yep, and, even, and we are almost even. On and now search. Illidan's dead for a couple of seconds longer than Malganis. Maybe there's a chance for something in the mid lane if Medivh can find it before Illidan gets there. Because Illidan's the threat, let's be clear here. It's Illidan who's been causing the panic on Valor, because otherwise this Valor is going to town. In they yeah. go. Chen's Chen's a bit, does not. Chen has his ult available. Yes, has the puts the slows onto Joanna. Illidan's on the way. There's the ley line, but that's going to buy time for Illidan to arrive. Actually, in they come for yet another game-ending team fight. The storm earth and fire popped, but the team's a bit split. Maybe Chen's going to be blown up here in his ultimate form. Has the portal available? Gets out of there for now, uh, but that's the, a long cooldown used, and they will have to run away. Yep, and one more thing, uh, not only Illidan is a uh, threat, because this rings uh, of frost from the BW Bloody is uh, wrecking. Uh, always three, two, three men got into the ring. They know, they know about this boss. Medivh is here. The ley line is not available for 30 seconds. The Chen ult is not available. The Ring of Frost that you've point, pointed out was incredibly deadly. That is available. Jaina wants to find it. The duplicate's been used on Jaina so that she can get that extreme burst damage. Lovely whip from Oriel keeps Illidan and Joanna at bay. Chen's in the Ring of Frost though. He doesn't have an ult. There's no protection available from Medivh for a half a second. The stagger's there. Will there be a protect? No, there won't. Chen goes down. Illidan in the back line though. Gets CC'd by the Malganis, mm. but started to chop up. Oriel might be able to resurrect herself, but at what cost? 
This is Seems surely. like we're seeing the end of red team and the end of the I, game. I think so. There's five on the deck. Oriel, I don't even know if you even know if she can resurrect or not. Probably not. It looks like it's going to be GG. She has resurrect, but what's the point? What's an Oriel going to do against five blue members? This incredible team, the top, the champions of Division 6, the champions of the Rare Cup, Sloth High Lords cutting through the core with only 20 armor. Illidan, chop, chop, chop goes Gaflo. <laughs> even and it's G. Abba G. Is here. It's... And this. So, yeah, big GG's to Sloth High Lords, their champion, by the way. Hello. Yeah. Champion of Rare Cup of Heroes Lunch. Incredible, incredible performance from Sloth High Lords. They looked so, so good in games one and two. Game three, they got a bit shaky. Fat Nova kind of said, no, you're not going to be this aggressive this game. We're going to take a bit of control and slap them down in game three. Fat Nova in game four, the pressure was there. Fat Nova were putting the... Putting Sloth High Lords on the back foot again and again. The resilience of Fat Nova. And yet, in, in an incredible 27 minute, 52 second game four, yeah. Sloth High Lords were declared the Rare Cup champions. Big shout out to them. So, we have to see if we can get an interview, which I, I'm hoping we will presently. Um... We will go to the interview room soon to get an interview with these teams. Um, but, I mean, Iskop, what's your, your feeling about how have Sloth High Lords managed to secure this victory? You know, what, what, what's their magic ingredient? I think it's all about their aggression because uh, they, they won, like, all their maps even the losing one was about aggression so we seen bloodlust and the first one yeah uh, we got some uh, crazy uh, like double medieval hooks we got some uh, illidan with abba so this is aggression 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 confidence in your team that illidan jumps in all the time so he he like no doubt that team will help him, team will heal him, so he just do his work. And it's all about aggression and team uh, confidence. I Ab absolutely. So we now are going to have an interview with BW Bloody of Sloth High Lords. So BW Bloody, Sloth High Lords, welcome and congratulations on a phenomenal performance today. Uh, thanks, Hello. thanks. Yeah, and my congrats too to you guys. It was really strong performance, really aggressive game from you. Oh yes. <laughs> how how are you feeling after an incredibly close fi grand final? Um, well, it was a rough uh, rough whole day, long uh, long hours. In between the games and such, but overall, it's yeah, it was fun, fun games. <laughs> well, but yeah, I mean, it was <laughs> it definitely. I mean, it looked fun. Well, it looked also very tense. I mean, were you were you worried that you might you might have you might have slipped to the last hurdle? Is that was that a worry there in that last game? Uh, the two last last games, yeah felt like might have fucked up on both of them. Uh, can I just uh, request that we don't uh, swear on the stream? <laughs> it's a family-friendly stream. Ah, I see. And <clears throat> I, I think we have fed up them. <laughs> but yeah, the, the last game was re really tough. So... Intense. Yes, I, I am here to give you even more congratulations. It's the master of lounge himself. It's Cosmic. Um, Good evening. <laughs> no, before I, you know, every now and again, a few months, Karis takes me out of my K 
cave in order to to <laughs> go and congratulate the teams. And I think after a day like today, I think there's uh, anyone who deserves more of a rest than you, BW Bloody. And I think um, before we go on to the sloth high lords there, I think we do need to give it up to Fat Nova, um, who have put in a lot of time as well. I mean, I think it's really nice to see a free agent team, even though they were a free agent team a couple of seasons ago, stick together and continue to do so well. I think it's admirable to, to see and commiserations to them, of course. I mean, they put up a pretty amazing fight there, giving you a run for your money in the last two games in particular. Um, but really glad to see they're there. But again, I mean, any team which plays Chogal in the playoffs, I think, deserves to have a little bit of recognition and uh, Sloth High Lords, not just with the name, but with your style of play. Congratulations for winning Season 11 Rare Cup. And oh, yes. uh, <laughs> yeah. with that, of course, as you are well aware, I'm sure, you have gained access to the highest quality plastic in the form of trophies that we can send out to just not just you but all of your teammates which took part in the season all you have to do is give us your name and addresses and we'll ship those trophies off to you within six six months or so <laughs> yeah no worries I, I will with my team about the information yeah no please do i mean if you've seen any of the photos that you I think we've got them up on stream. Those look absolutely incredible. They're made by our very own Eve. Um, but uh, of course, I mean, a huge shout out to Sloth Highlands, as I said. But I just want to take the time while I have here as well to give a, a huge shout out as well to everybody behind the scenes, which makes it possible, um, not just for the casters as well, but for all of the players, you know, making this run smoothly and making sure that everyone arrives where they're supposed to be on time. Um, we have, you know, our casters being Aviator, Reeves, Samu, Yosh, of course, we've got Karis on screen, Iscourt, Dentro, Myrmidon. There's been a huge number of mods behind the scenes as well. I mean, I've been talking to Transparent a little bit. Karis, of course, uh, huge thanks to you, John Brennan, and of course, our very own lounge, Vice Lounge Master herself, Tiny Owl, has been involved. And uh, I hope you, bloody, on your side, it's been a good experience for you in general. Um, and I hope that uh, the long hours were well worth it. Yes, it was definitely definitely worth it. All right. Well, from my side, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Just again, a huge congratulations to you, Sloth High Lords. I can't think of a better fitting name to have won the Rare Cup. <laughs> um, <laughs> and there's a part of me inside which is very glad that you did. So just send me that information over as soon as you can, and we'll get those uh, trophies off to you as soon as possible. Thanks so much. Yeah. No Thank problem. you, no Cosmic. Problem. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> BW Buddy, you know, <sighs> It's been an incredible performance from your team. Top of Division 6, uh, now winning the Rare Cup. What's next? Uh, we'll see what we land on uh, for the next divi division. Uh, we, we'll, I think I, we will part participate in Season 12. Yeah. But let, let's see what where we land. Well, I mean, if if nothing changes, you know, you should be promoted to Division Five, right? Um, that'd uh, be. We, we do have, um, at the moment, Division Four MMR. If that isn't changed. Right, I see. So we'll see where where we land. Yeah, it's tough to measure because obviously the the Heroes Profile MMR has been moving a lot throughout the season, so it's difficult to. To, make, to gauge exactly. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Iskor, anything you want to ask um, of, of BW Bloody here? Um, well, I don't know. I, I thought about, like, uh, even if you land up in Division 5 or 4, your, like, your goal will be aiming for Epic Cup. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, okay. That's, that's a good example of uh, passion of the game, yeah. They just won rare cup and already trying to uh, go next and try to win epic cup, yeah. Division five four. Yeah. 
isn't that how it works? First rare cup, then epic cup, and then... <laughs> then uh, legendary cup, and then mythic. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. How, that's the natural progression. And then, yeah. Okay, I see you. <laughs> one I cup see. at a time. And then you can have one, like, <laughs> all the trophies, you can collect them in, like, a case. And... <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, we didn't get to play Shugal in any of the final games. Are you disappointed by that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it definitely was said about Shugal and Zul bans because I personally want to see some Zul games in finals, but okay. Yeah, we did play Illidan was cool Zool. too. <laughs> Zul in the other games though. Yeah. And yeah. that's probably why we got Zul banned. Yeah. Yeah, oh, well, because I think it, it was really strong performance with that. So, any final thoughts from you, BWW, or any shout-outs you want to do? Uh, of course, I will shout out to the t uh, my team and for the sub Dur uh, for playing with us the whole day. It was really, really good performance. Yeah, and credit to you for a phenomenal performance. So thank you for joining us, and um, we look forward to seeing more of your team next season. Uh, so definitely keep us posted, and we'll, we'll follow you with some interest, I'm sure. Oh, yes. Thanks, thanks. Now okay. I think I will go go to bed <laughs> okay yes uh, a well-earned rest okay yeah, oh, you yeah. sounds a bit of tired you know <laughs> yeah who, who wouldn't wouldn't be <laughs> okay thank you take it go take your well-earned rest and we will see you soon i hope yeah see ya see ya okay bye. bye so that brings to a close the heroes lounge rare cup i mean what a day we've had this cup i mean just a phenomenal Phenomenal experience for watching these teams, but that final, I mean, oh, that Alter Act game, wow. Yeah, it was really cool when when Fat Nova actually uh, like bring their powers and win the third map, and the fourth one was really really strong from both teams, and it was kind of entertaining. This Ring of Frost, Illidan. We saw that uh, Aurel dead, but then we saw that Jaina is definitely dead. But oh my god, it it's so much stuff going on. Super super games. Yeah, and you know, like we said, credit to Fat Nova who's been brilliant, uh, brilliant contenders there in the grand final and not collapsing under the pressure. Because we said coming into this, you know, yeah, they've lost two 0 in the past. You know, it'd be easy to crash. Cra Collapsing the pressure, but they really showed some tenacity there in in games three and four, and brought the fight to Sloth High Lords exactly as we said they should, and they did. And of course, credit to all the other teams who've played throughout today. It's that's all we've got time for today. But don't worry, Heroes Lounge is back tomorrow, and um, we will be bringing you the Heroes Lounge Epic Cup, uh, featuring teams from divisions four and five that'll be kicking off at the same time as this today this did today at 1300 cet and you can choose to see that all on this channel or on heroes lounge 2 starting tomorrow in the early afternoon as i say any final thoughts from you esco <sighs> no thoughts like slots high lords need to win epic cup next season okay <laughs> if you hear me it's shout out to you and thank you all who are watching us today and like go check out tomorrow's game it will be epic up from division five and four yeah from heroes lunch absolutely bye -bye. thank you iscop um thank you everybody who's made today possible like cosmic was mentioning all of the heroes lunch staff who work behind the scenes and throughout the division and all the moderators it's been incredible and all the casters who've done a lot a fairly hard job today um keeping things here for your viewing pleasure so definitely keep following the channel and all of our casters
thank you for watching. We're going to leave you with some of the credits for season 11 of Heroes Lounge. Some of the to a name check of many of the people who've contributed this season. And uh, we will see you again tomorrow, of course, for the Epic Cup. Thank you.